about over positive is please they creep me oh, out. And, hey Good there, Snicker Snacks. <laughs> Welcome back to Corporal Tales Presents <laughs> oh, Awesome me. Adventures. Hi, As always, I am your host, just your local pectoral <laughs> Muppet, Space Lord Pajamas. We heard Vorpal Tales. We are Vorpal Tales, and we play in a wide assortment of games seven days a week that fall into two categories, Awesome Adventures and Terrifying Tales. Be sure to check out the calendar at VorpalTales.com to stay up to date with all of our shows. For those of you following along at home tonight, tonight's Awesome Adventure is On the Trail of the Red Widow, using Modifius Entertainment's Octung Cthulhu. Check out all their other awesome systems that we play here at Vorpal Tales at Modifius.net. Remember to follow Vorpal Tales on Twitch and visit our website to find the link to join our Discord. I really hate this script. I gotta rewrite it. We're on the most we are on most <laughs> major uh, social media outlets, including YouTube as Vorpal Tales. So remember to follow, subscribe, and hit the bell to get all the updates. Vorpal Tales is also on Drive Through RPG. Check out some of our Vorpally supplements that include characters, monsters, and scenarios made for many of the games we play weekly. More since, most importantly. Subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com. Bless your horrible tales. Let's introduce our intrepid adventurers, Jane, Harry, Patty, JT, Silky, and Kitty Kimchi. How you doing, Austin Sauces? Tell us who you are and what you'll be playing tonight. Hello, I'm Jane, also known as the Confused Pro. Tonight, I'll be playing Shinyi. Uh, I'm not going to try to say the class because I always fuck it up, but I'm the uh, back alley doctor. The mur Lots yeah, of murder opium nurse. kids. Murder nurse. Yeah. <laughs> yes, hi, I'm Harry, aka Slippery Cat. Um, and I am playing Captain Benji, um, the commander. Uh it's probably me next. Howdy everyone. I am Patrick. You can find me on the internet at Patty Shakes underscore. And tonight I am playing uh Beauregard Bauer, the uh Grease Monkey. Hey folks, I'm JT. You can find me around the internet at Zensomancer. Tonight I'm playing Howie, the con artist, slash, I don't know, something else. Here, you sure are something, JT. Um, and that's me. Hi guys, I am Selkie. You can find me all over the internet as Rebel Selkie except for that one place. And when I figure out who you are, who has my name, um, I'm probably just going to send your FBI agent your entire history from your computer. Um, it's cool though. Uh, and tonight I am playing Tessa Therese Murray, the uh, investigator who doesn't know how to keep her nose out of a museum. Hi everybody, I'm Kitty Kimchi and you can find me at, yep, she's Blasian. And tonight I'm playing Abby, your infiltrator, who's probably going to delete her browser history per some of our conversations. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so this episode is brought to you by Whales Whiskey, made in Finland with real synthetic whales. Free your inner whale. Try their new radium infused Whales Freedom Blend. Additionally, Warble Tales has some great sponsors we'd love to tell you about. First is QUEmpire.com. Small company making original dice and products for your favorite RPGs and card games. Digital Crate is the original RPG loot box, delivering tabletop gear like dice, minis, and terrain, plus original adventures to your castle doors each month. Become a member and get your crate today. Use code VORPALTALESDC, that's all caps, at checkout to get a 5% off your new subscription. Next is Hit Point Press, known for their various reference cards, but also for creating the Humblewood and Hecknick campaign settings. Finally is Jim Hammer and Sons, an RPG supplement store that is everything from Decks of Wonder to Decks of Illusion to Dice. Visit, our, uh, visit VorpalTales.com, check our affiliate link, and anything you purchase, a portion of it will benefit the show. Thanks to Modifius Entertainment for publishing some really awesome systems that we allow us to have some fantastic adventures. And yeah, so with the introduction out of the way, we can get to why everyone's here. Uh, who here is a fan of frozen yogurt, or as Froyo, yeah. as the kids call it? Yeah. Is that good. really okay? Hold on, pause. Is that really something that we take hard stances on? Like, are you a fan of it or not? Like, Froyo is just like, mm -hmm. eh. like it's not like gotta get me some frozen yogurt. It's just like. Oh, there's a frozen yogurt shop nearby. 
sure, that sounds good. I feel like you're taking right. Really am I right stuff. on this? I like, am I right on this? Or, it's not like it's not like actual ice cream where people are like, "Holy shit, it's ice cream! Let's get some ice cream." It's just like, oh, you know, froyo is fine. You know, it's whatever. Yeah, from what from what but, I've but experienced, did... it's like the, where you're going for froyo. There are a handful of psychos who don't like froyo. But also, Patty, didn't you yourself within this conversation just take a hard stance on right? Frozen like you, you, you went in real like, hard. Your hard stance was why are we right? I'm taking on it? yeah, I'm taking a significant stance on the fact that someone posed a question about Froyo. Like that's like asking like, hey, fuck hey, you, man, buddy. You... It was just a question. <laughs> hey man, do you like water? Like, yeah, no, water's no, like, water's fine. But if so, my, my experience in the city, like if you're going to go to Froyo, like where are you going to go, Froyo? Well, yeah, that's because you're in New York City, where there's thirty different Froyo places within. Fine. Six blocks, Fine. Fine. and they probably Fine. cost the equivalent of a Honda Civic to get. It. Also, yeah. didn't that didn't that fad die? Didn't the Froyo fad die? Apparently not. Yeah, my town, my suburban town, had three Froyo restaurants, and two of them had great locations. One had a terrible location, but the only one still around is the one with the bad location because it's the only one that could afford the retail rent. So, and yeah, it's a great place. If you've learned every, shout out to anything Squirrel tonight, in New Canaan. There you go. Yeah, see if you learned anything, it's location, location, location. Can I like related thing? Sure. So one of my best friends was telling me about just mash up a bunch of ripened uh, bananas and put it in the freezer oh. and then boom. Oh no, Patty, come back. <laughs> banana, banana ice cream. You broke him. Kind of. But literally it's just frozen mashed up bananas. Patty, we need to go. No, Patty, you can't back out of this. Patty, we need you. I think Who's Patty's taking a hard around? stance on your banana mush. Uh, um uh so um like that is that is my kryptonite uh bananas are quite possibly the most disgusting thing on the planet to me so i should Patty probably bar none. what the fuck bar bananas none bananas are essential so, for making good smoothies i mean so i should no, probably mm, not bring up disagree. the fact that i have a vegan friend who uses banana peels to make bacon then huh oh, oh that's disgu- okay that's, that's disgusting. disgusting that's banana gross bread, i don't so good. i don't why would you molest pancakes? bacon like that Clearly, what did bacon ever do to your, eat your vegan friend? penis like the rest of us? The world yeah. But make eye contact with someone but while you eat it. They not, chose no, to be vegan. Do not start a but, war against bacon. Yeah. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, it, it, uh, cannibalism, because it, as long as it's consensual cannibalism, is what? actually considered vegan. Yeah, but there's no way to uh, it, commit cannibalism awesome. without murder. And there's arguments about whether or not someone who would consent to cannibalism is in a right mind state at all. And would be able to like related about that. How how X-rated yeah. can we be? Because I have a related comment on this. I know someone on Reddit had his friends eat his foot. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's it, it comes down to like as long it depends really. If the cannibalism is lethal, then you could make the argument that <laughs> nobody is tech would be in the right mind. Like somebody who would agree to be cannibalized would be insane by most metrics. And so it, okay, so we went from tea bagging <laughs> to toys to frozen yogurt in one week. Cannibalism. In one week. To consent to eating group. ass. What if you don't want to hear esoteric <laughs> legal arguments about cannibalism? Then but why not you... in the way you would think of eating ass? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Is cum vegan? Uh. Yeah. Uh, if so, it's human and consensually extracted. Um, if I'm reading the chat right, Harry, uh, Alisai, Regim, Harry chooses violence, I think in regards to the conversation, mm. I don't know how okay, much I'll take Okay, I'll take a take. Uh, even really non-consensual don't. cannibalism should be legal. Let's all just eat each other. There's my violence. Like Hellraiser? Yeah, just uh, let's live in a world of cannibals. No, humans... We don't like, deserve it anymore. Humans don't taste good. No, they don't. They're humans, uh, stressed. Whoa, Jeffrey Dahmer hold on. Jane. You're speaking yeah. with a lot of confidence of that statement there. Okay, okay, let me explain. We have eaten people in the past. No, oh my god. Okay. I feel, I feel why, like... why do you mean we? Wait, 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 because you two are a couple. You two Hello? come together as FBI? a pair. FBI? Yes, this conversation we? right here. This one right here. <laughs> what do you mean we? Is that the collective we? Or is that okay, you and yeah, Jane? Because yeah, 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 if no, you guys no, are coming no. to visit me in like a month and a half, I need to know because I got to get my health insurance in order. <laughs> no, no, I got a dog. has taken place. Just let me explain. 
Good I don't know. I chew up my fingernails. See, okay, real quick. Dude, I just had to guys. add cum as a permitted term. Thanks, guys. How did we get <laughs> here from frozen yogurt? Dude, is- this study is from chefs and the comparison of other types of meat. Dry pork. Meat, um, due to our muscle distribu- muscle and fat distribution, along with the uh, in- immense amount of stress that we experience and... Um, our fat is not like the good tasting fat that other animals have. We would be extremely tough and dry and gamey and just not what you want to eat. Um, although in theory, <laughs> it's going to sound so fucked up. In theory, the best way to consume a human would be as baby. Yeah, I know that makes sense. On that note, let's play Majin Kazulu. All right, so tonight we continue your terrifyingly awesome adventure. You know, I just watched the community episode, and they were in a frozen yogurt place, and they didn't have a question. You guys took it. Oh, damn. Okay. Because when the episode of Community filmed, Froyo was still a fad. I know. Anyway. We're that many years outside of the Froyo fad. I have a I have a way to help fund Vorpal Tales further. We can, <laughs> can have a sell hot, human no, no, no. froyo. No. Oh no, <laughs> no! Have a higher tier subscription, but you get to hang out in our pre-chat uh, Zoom call. <laughs> no, we should do that to punish people we ban from our chat. Like Delightful. this is not, this is not a people... punishment, Harry. This is not clockwork a orange. Then I'm Just... pretty sure. The term ovipositor was mentioned you, in the chat you prior to by you. <laughs> yes, by me. You can't be like, I'm pretty sure this term, yeah, when you said it. You yes. don't, don't listen. Don't, 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 don't. You did this. You I, did d- I know. I'm saying people should be wary of joining I, our pre show <laughs> chat. I just want my FBI agent to have a good time, not a long time. I want my here. FBI agent to be as traumatized as those content moderators for Facebook are. Because fuck them, they're an FBI agent. I um, I realized that I need to not run serious games with, Chad, with our pre-chat. Yeah, I'm so sorry, honey, that you're listening in on this. I'll delete my, my, my history later. I, I can't help who I hang out with, okay? That's hot. Maybe um, you can- hey, cool. big FBI guy, I'm coming for you. You know, he's maybe if we got more, I mean, your walls, you Dave. Oh my god, okay. Well, uh, threatening our FBI agents aside, if I remember correctly, last time we uh we got rescued by some French dudes, yes. Oh, so, sure. last time <clears throat> our agents nursed their injuries from the train wreck and encountered a black sun sorcerer raising the dead of the train and trying to flee with their ill gotten goods. The squad, however, took them down with some precision and acquired strange mechanical devices, as well as stumbling upon an odd tablet from whom those who gazed at it gave them dark visions. Opting to destroy it rather than see it fall into the wrong hands, the squad met up with Vichy defectors, now serving free French. Led by Maurice LaRouche, Rochelle, uh, the squad was snuck into the battered Algiers, where they were able to recover their, from their injuries, while the Allies invaded the main city. With the city mostly under Allied control, Maurice came to them with news of the Red Widow. Uh, That they had been there, um, but had fled already. However, where they fled was the mystery that needed to be solved. So, agents, what do you do? Remember that you have three fortune in your pool right now? Uh, That's the re-roll dice and everything. And yeah, so... Last we left, everyone was in the nursing uh, area. I think. Um, uh, I was doing my job. Yes, you were doing your job. And uh, if I can get to where my notes are, where was it? Doris or Abby was the only one that really wasn't majorly injured and was just hanging about. And um, yeah, Maurice came into you and was like, I have news of uh, the Red Widow in their trail so um yeah let's also not forget the fact that tessa being an idiot um after the tablet was smashed she secretly pocketed a piece of it that is true oh yeah no we we out of game remember that (laughs) what uh, what could what could possibly go wrong it belongs in a museum if it worked for evelyn o'connell it certainly will work for me yes that was my friend for you for these chats 
there's there's going to be no repercussions to carrying around in Done. tablet Done. that made you crazy. So even if there aren't arcane repercussions, if I find out about the tablet, there will be repercussions for me. I will fight you. Also, I'm pretty sure I was the only one who didn't look at the tablet, right? Bo and Abby, and yeah, Bo and Abby didn't look at the tablet. Correct. Yeah, I did smart. Bo and Abby are the only people in this fucking group that have any brains. (laughs) Yo, Benji didn't look at it. I am a librarian. I blew up the thing. (laughs) That's true. Benji did not look either, but Benji is Benji. And so, I, my previous statement remains true. Okay, cool. Yes, Benji is Benji, a competent commander. So, um, yeah. If that helped you sleep at night. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. We need intel. Uh, are there any Nazis still alive? Yes. So what's happening right now is um, it's the battle to take Algiers, uh, which um, basically in World War II, they atta- uh, the Allies entered in through Africa, um, and they took Casablanca first. Uh, Algiers, and then they were moving on to Tun- Tunisia to sort of set up a uh, base of operations to invade Italy from the south. So that's what's uh, okay, going on I right now. Okay, I think I have a way to get them to speak. Is there like a prisoner of war camp here? That no, can... so what's going on right now is the battle still is like on the tail end. Um, the Nazis are in a very slow retreat. The Allies are sort of uh, uh, taking ground. And you're kind of on the outskirts. Um just uh not part of the battle you're in kind of like a uh um uh a uh uh wounded soldiers camp for the allies and Mm -hmm. um also sort of the central part for where like the free french soldiers and defectors are um held up and um before anybody has some crazy thoughts uh maurice does actually mention that um he knew uh, uh his old commander who somewhere in the city actually had interactions with the widow um, when they were escaping through Algiers. So if you can find him or traces of him, you might be able to get um, word on where the widow fled to. All right. So he's in the city. Um, could we perhaps locate some ally contact? little shakedown like what do you know about this man where did he go yeah uh you'd have to enter in the city which is being shelled and still being fought for um and yeah you could find somebody uh follow a trail uh find some agents find some nazi soldiers um nothing can ever be easy no but that's okay let's do it All right, Commander, I will trust in your ability not to get yourself killed. Man. So wait, the plan is to just interview prisoners or to uh, are we going into the city again? Uh, you know that um, you're looking for a very specific individual or traces of him. It was uh, uh, Mar- Maurice's the original uh, commander who is named Marcel Perdot. And he actually had interactions with the widow and knows who like was helping them get out of the city. And those people might know where they went. Um, he tells you very sort of sternly that like you're going to be dealing with Nazi soldiers and they're very fanatic about being Nazi soldiers and serving the Reich. So getting information out of them will be a little difficult. However, Marcel, he might sell them, sell out his friends quickly because, well, that's just the type of, uh, type of person he is. So, um, I mean, I, I have met. You do Nazis have meth, can't so meth, that so maybe yes. Um, I think we have the upper hand, you guys. This is true. Um, you uh, so yeah, you know, you have to get into the city somehow. Um, it's gonna be kind of dangerous because it's still um, being fought for in some places, and you may or may not encounter Nazi soldiers, and you'll have to navigate your way through. Uh, and he kind of wishes you good luck on that and ask you if there's anything or any direction that you need before heading out. Uh, are we in need of any forms of supplies? 
Uh, we need to top up on ammo grenades, get some smokes, uh, get some maybe some anti-tank grenades. Uh, uh, all of that's there except maybe the anti-tank grenades. You might have to improvise that. Okay, well, I can do that. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heavens, what are we getting Hello. ourselves into? Algiers. Um, yeah. Which, uh, uh, side note, for anyone who's a, a history buff or a war buff for that matter, the battles in Algiers were actually objectively some of the more interesting ones that happened during this time period. But that's just a personal thing. I think I've just seen saving private wine on too many times. Yeah, um, no, this is an oversimplification of what is actually going on in, in North Africa at yeah. the time. It's pretty fascinating. <clears throat> yeah. Um, also, uh, yeah. Uh, so Tessa's also going to pop in and uh, perhaps we should get some bayonets or swords or things that are not just explosives because after that last little incident we had, I think having something a little bit more uh, might be a bit more to the point. Oh yeah, the guns were a given. <laughs> I don't think subtlety is our strong suit. Nope. So unfortunately, we have an American on our team. We have several Americans. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, we've all of, saved your collective whoa. lives several times each. Out of character, Wednesday night is not real good at stealth. <laughs> not, uh, no good at, just just Wednesday one. night in general, Wednesday. not real good at stealth. <laughs> Wednesday's never been good at yeah. stealth. Let's be yeah, honest. No, Wednesday's no, the time. Not just long. gonna look at the office. Oh yeah, I still have that MG42. Oh shit, it is true. Yeah, Shinny's she, she just looking at uh, command. The commander just like. You, life, me, saving? Yeah. No. No, I'm sorry. I led the assault on that uh, occult, uh, that occult witch wizard dude, that warlock. Leave me to the one blowing smoke. He's going to blow a ring of smoke in his face. <laughs> Man, I hate you guys. <laughs> the feeling is mutual, Captain. Uh, I want to check out the motor pool and find us uh, a, the correct vehicle for this mission. Uh, their motor pool is pretty limited as they're, they're really just um, whatever they could salvage uh, before the attack. Um, you have some regular, like sort of, you actually have some very nice, like sports cars, uh, some trucks, um, no tanks. Uh, the one tank they do have is like it's treads are blown off and it's cannon sort of bent one way. Um, Ooh. Well, that's not going to be useful. Uh, I would like to find a combination vehicle that has enough room for all of us. Mm -hmm. Like an M1 uh, half track, something like that? No, 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 no. Because we want to be able to blend in in the city streets oh. and maneuver the city streets correctly. But if we are chased out of the city, it's not going to fall apart in the desert as soon as we hit sand. Mm. Uh, you find a few sort of like station wagon, like taxi cabs. Okay. Could I quickly modify one to have... Uh, uh, all terrain tires as opposed to city tires. Yeah, you find like a Jeep or something that's uh, you could easily swap the tires that that fit. All right, I I, li I <laughs> it looks ridiculous, but I put a lift on it and then I put the all terrain tires on. Okay. Um, and I even kind of uh, tinker with the engine a little bit. I'll and uh, get it so that it's going to be pretty not so fast in the city but maneuverable and then out in the if it, if we have to hit sand we'll we'll be able to hang with anything that's chasing us give me that insight in vehicles rolls let's just see what you manage here sure uh insight in that number vehicles is that number okay gonna can say I use my can i use my focus in vehicles cars for this oh yeah definitely uh, can I also use my truth, uh, either OCD mechanic or born behind the wheel? Yes, I would allow that as well. Okay. So you're rolling 40 20s. Okay. Uh, okay. 
That is pretty good. That is one, two. That's four successes because one of them I rolled underneath my vehicle's number. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, you have two extra momentum there. Um, you you just needed two successes. You managed to get it. You managed to get some nice altering tires on it. Um, which if you hit sand or like rough terrain, you feel like you'll 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 manage. Um, and you're actually able to sort of lift it up off the ground a little bit, and um, you even sort of tack on some armored plating on it just sheets of metal that you can find um to go over some of the 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 doors and every and, and things um yeah you feel like you've you've got a fairly rugged vehicle that'll take you in awesome <clears throat> i'd like to try to find several weapons in the vicinity uh yeah you're looking for something specific yes i am looking because for um a garot garot like the garot garot Garot, yeah garot okay yeah you easily find a nice piece of wire that you can you can use for that um a fighting knife yeah you find uh like a a a big old trench knife that's a different that is a distinct different oh what are you looking for so fighting knife and trench knife are are two th- different things on the table. Oh yeah, I assume a fighting a... knife is like a butterfly or something. Yeah, like yeah. A, you find yeah. Okay, <laughs> and then I want an axe because chat was talking about axes. Okay, you you find like an old. Uh, are you looking for like a small one handed hatchet or like a fire axe? Um. Oh, fire axe. Tomahawk, does... tomahawk, 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 tomahawk. <laughs> yeah, t- yeah, tomahawk does one less damage. Like an axe does one less damage than a fire axe. But you can throw a tomahawk. But I can... You know, yeah, historically, axe. there are actually like several dozen genuinely uh, reputable accounts of Russian partisans decapitating Nazis, like just in the moment with axes. Nice. Just like they were put on lumber battalions or whatever and just nice. went ham. Um, yeah. Plus, if, if, if Call of Duty has taught me anything, tomahawks one hit kills. So, God damn it, Patty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most weapons there. will be a one hit kill if you hit someone in the yes, right place. You do find a few hatchets that you could use for chucking. Beautiful. And if it's a one hit kill, I will roll all 12 of my D6. <laughs> this is not when Call I, of Duty. Uh, <laughs> when I <laughs> throw my knife, my axe. Okay. Uh, wait, can wait. You, can I have one more? Sure. <laughs> Brass knuckles. Yeah, those are easy to find. <laughs> Yes. I didn't have to roll for any of this. Come on. I mean, they they've been collecting shit uh, as they've been trying to like escape the city and sort of help out the allies. So they've been they've been scavenging for a few days. So this is all easy shit that you you just find laying around. Nice. Right. Um, Bo, is there anything specific uh, other than the car that you wanted to do? Um, you you can restock your explosives. Um, yep. Top that off. Uh. uh I, I grab Samantha and uh, a bunch of backup shells. Okay. Uh, I'll probably actually uh, bogart some of uh, JT's tomahawks, like one maybe. Okay, cool. Yeah, just, there's a just, there's just to have. There was a lumberjack house because there's a lot of trees in Algiers or something. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Cool. All right. Uh, Shengyi, anything that you're looking for specifically before you head out? Uh, let's see, maybe a knife to lace with some poison, perhaps. Uh, you do find a couple medical kits, um, where like morphine and just random bits and bobs of, uh, other stuff where you're like, I could definitely poison somebody this with the right stuff. Yep. Yeah. She's just admiring the equipment. Cool. Uh, Abby. (laughs) Anything specifically that you'd be looking for before head, heading out? Um, she's going to make sure she has a solid knife, uh, guns, one or two explosives. Sounds good. Easily found. Just like um, as long as you're not looking for anything outlandish or very specific, you and if it's just basic equipment. Yeah, they have it. Um, cool. Uh, Benji, anything specific that you're looking for? Beyond my st- beyond my standard kit, I'm gonna get some composition B, which is a type of explosive used in demolition, if they have any. 
They have uh, stock. They have like one good set of it that you could blow one thing up really nice with it. Perfect. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, other than that, topping off on grenades, getting some smoke grenades, ammunition, and yeah, <laughs> I've got my MP42. I'm feeling ready to go. Cool. Jessa, anything? Uh, yeah. So, um, can I, based off the fact that the French Foreign Legion was in this area, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. any bayonets or any swords? Yes, plenty of those. Wonderful. I will take one of each. All right. Um, and then. I'm assuming that there is enough, uh, we are being weighed down with enough grenades that we could probably blow a city, ha- blow, blow a hole in Niagara Falls. Uh, uh, so probably not off. that many. Like, each of you has, like, two or three grenades. Um, uh, yeah. But, yeah, so you can easily have, like, two or three. Okay. Each. Um, I'm also curious to know, um, do considering everyone has been uh, collecting supplies and trying to empty out as much of the city as possible, including the wealth of the assholes who used to live there, um, are there any intact collegiate libraries, or were they able to move any of the existing books to camp? That is a good, good question. Um... Yes, they have a few, but it's like the basic stuff. Um, what were you looking for? Uh, specifically? Spe- I mean, specifically, I'm going to be, uh, maybe not me, I am not a sneaky bitch, <laughs> but like specifically the sneaky bitch that is Tessa. Um, I was hoping that perhaps if we were driving through a part of the city where she can access some information uh, to see if uh, any uh, any of the existing occultist sections of the libraries had any um, information yes. in regard to the stuff she has. In the center of the city, there is a library. So if you can convince your compatriots to move past it, that is something that you could stop and do. You get rumors that you're not sure if it's been um, occupied yet or if it's still in, under Nazi control. You're not quite sure. Um, but it's, it's there. Okay. Okay. I got an idea. All right. Cool. Uh, anything else that any of you can think of before you start heading in? First aid kits. First aid kits. Good call. You get, uh, like one really nice kit that, um, can help Jing Yi do some, uh, sutures and things, uh, should, should the worst happen. She can lace the cat gut with heroin. It'll be wonderful. <laughs> uh, cool. So, uh, how are you heading in? Uh, you just driving up the main road? You going in through some side roads? Like, what, what's your what's your approach? As uh, the city's still getting shelled, um, they're still fighting in certain sections of the the streets and things. Um, you you don't you don't have a lot of intel. It's kind of crazy out there uh i mean i i believe at this point this is where we would defect to our driver um and also uh using the map i'm going i'm assuming that there is a map in the car yeah they they give you a random map that they had um maurice points out since the locations where he knew there were some nazi like holdouts as well as where um, the Loyal Vici uh, holdouts are as well. Um, he doesn't know where his main commander is, um, mm-hmm. but uh, he just he just knows that if you start asking questions and beating some people, you might, uh, might start getting information. Let's go do that. Yeah, by asking questions, I think you mean trading back. <laughs> I am going, well, Tessa, not I, but uh, I think te- I am going to try to highly encourage uh, Bo to take the route closest to the library for inconspic- inconspicuous uh, reasons. Cool. Uh, Bo, do you accept this route towards the library? Um, well, is there another like set? location we're going to or are we just like driving through town looking for 
clues. Uh, you have like some locations of where you know there were some Nazi holdouts are. You have a few locations uh, where um, some Vichy holdouts are. You know which side of the city the Allies have sort of are moving through. Um, and the library is kind of in the center of it all. Um, we are the world's most fucked up Scooby gang. <laughs> do well then i'll pose i'll kind of uh as tessa tells that to me but well hold on now and i'll post the rest of the group now um i if i remember correctly now i'm gonna go ahead and admit ford education not the best but um there there's this thing where like um if you want to like take in history you do like a uh what's what's it called um that thing where you you attack on all fronts at once. Do we want to go to these uh, little hidey holes all at once and just like blow them all up at once? And then they don't have enough time to like re- see what's coming because they'll like radio ahead and tell their friends like, hey, there's some motherfuckers here trying to blow us up. Or are we trying to, you know, muster all our strength at once and kind of just you know, spearhead through these. I, I'm not sure what the best way is because if we're looking to do all at once kind of thing, um, I could drop you all off and then uh, me and the little lady, we can go to the library and uh, we can uh, get whatever it is she's looking for. We're in enemy territory. I don't think we can afford to split ourselves. We need to be in full force wherever we go. And I don't think we have the manpower to spare to... Uh, you know. Also, from my understanding, aren't we just here to gather information? I'm not so sure about you, but I am rather not keen on taking life. As much fun as it would be, I, we're not here to uh, break the Nazi defense of Algiers. We're here to well, we're, we're, find we're this not, one person. We're not going to be, um, uh, what's the opposite of terrorists? We're not going to be freedom fighters. That's the opposite of maybe it? later, but our goal is to uh or I think it's a synonym or cinnamon or something like that. You got what you mean, so you communicated well. Our goal should be to stay as under the radar as possible. All righty, I ain't gonna argue with that. All right, well, that's the case then. Uh I guess I'll just drop you all off at uh, the whatever the first location is. Um uh, I can hook up a ham in 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 the car in the truck if y'all got uh, if y'all can borrow someone else's radio, um, and then you know you just let me know where you guys are headed to, and then once uh once uh once little lady here is done with the library and the research and the books and stuff, uh, we'll swing by and come pick you up maybe if that works. Yeah, you can hook up a, a radio set. Um... I assume if it's like a rep- a repurposed taxi cab, there's probably already one in there. Yeah, and you just have to sort of like get the channels right. It's safe to assume there would be one. I mean, if we haven't left yet, I'm sure they probably have one of those stockpiled in the area, anyways, right? Yeah, it's it, yeah. He's got uh, he's got a good radio with him. Um, Captain manages to find a good like radio. <laughs> Radios in these days were more like backpacks. So uh, yeah, um, who who's going to carry the radio? Literally. Well, that's what I was saying, you know, when you go to one of these strongholds, you just borrow the radio real quick, but, or, you know, you guys can bring, because the, the backpack radio is going to be harder to blend into the city with. That is true. Mm-hmm. You're going to look like a soldier if you got that. Oh, I mean, we already don't blend in fairly well. I mean, y'all, other unless uh, the captain is wearing his uniform, you all are in civilian clothes for the most part, so outside of not being able to speak most local languages, you, nobody would really... It's in the middle of a war, so nobody's going to really question you unless you're in areas that you shouldn't be necessarily. Oh, knowing us, we're definitely going to be in. I'll leave it up to you to you find uh, individuals what we do, but uh, uh, I'm just saying, you know, I I, I don't mind playing uh, playing the part of taxi. I don't mind. You know, I've got this good idea for like 
and you know taxis are just kind of unreliable where you know the people are the taxis i wonder if there's a cool german word i could use for to to, to name my that's that's discussed for a different time <clears throat> Understood. Well, I think we should probably do the incorporation plan to. Why did I go into Russian? Fuck! I should have just played. It, it was fine. It was fine. Um, <laughs> we should leave the infiltration plan to the captain. After all, let him show off his tactics. Prove he isn't all wrong. So, do we have a location of the enemy uh, positions on a map? Uh, like yeah, you, you know where they still have holdouts. Um, in we'll say suburbs of the city um, or sections of the city. So uh, Bo's plan of kind of dropping you off in the area and you guys scouting it out isn't a bad isn't a bad idea. Do we want to make All a wrong right. idea? I didn't have a bad idea. So do we have a general description of who we're looking for at all? Uh, yeah, he, he tells, I mean, he looks French, basically. Um, and do you actually have a name? Uh, Marcel Perdot. And... Okay, so what we're gonna do is keep a is keep a low profile, uh, avoid confrontation with local authorities to any degree you can. Only use lethal force if you are like, if you have a gun to your head, uh, and look for this person. If you see anybody who might be him, uh, we'll meet up uh, in front of the library uh, in one hour. Let's say. Okay. No worries. Our middle name is discreet. I can't possibly see this going wrong, Captain. Wait, your middle name's discreet? It's French. So with that... Oh, Bo discreet. Will... <laughs> mm -hmm. I see it. Bo will drop you off in a section of the city that um, was a mix of like Vichy and Nazis uh, holding out. Um, Bo, give me, a, give me a quick driving test. Sure. As so uh, like vehicles and coordination? Yes. Okay. Uh, what number is that? Plus that. Uh, two successes. Two successes. Nice. Um, you're driving through the city. Um, there's a lot of roadblocks. There's a lot of shit in the road. Um, but you're able to get around it by going down. You're like, you've never been here, but you're just like, you kind of know cities and you know, driving. So you're like this alley and then this pathway. And then this, um, you actually like just by the hair of your tail, get out, get out from under a building that just got shelled. Um, and you're able to get them to an area basically where they, they should be. And then you head off uh, pretty easily to the location of the library. So um tessa and Bo are off towards the library unless anybody else wants to go with them the rest of you are going to scour the city for this individual i'm going with them to the library okay cool so tessa and abby you're off with Bo uh towards the library uh Shung Yi and uh <clears throat> howie and benji are heading off towards the uh the location where uh they need to be cool all right so we'll deal with um, our su suburbanites, for lack of a better, better term, first. Um, Benji, you have Howie and you have Zheng Yi with you. What do you? How are how are you going about this? Um, you can hear there's like shelling, there's yelling. You can hear fighting off in the distance. Um, you're kind of just in a blown out section of the town, uh, for lack of a better description. What you doing? So we've got to find these holdouts, right? We have general locations. So I'm going to start heading to wherever uh, those are on the map. Okay. Not going, making a beeline, obviously. I'm going to be keeping, I'm going to be sort of wandering around, you know, stumble my way towards them, maybe. Not stumble, literally, but look as much like a civilian as possible. Okay. Um. Yes. Uh, so... Give me a uh, tactics and coordination as you're moving through town. Okay, let's see. Okay, 2d20 and... Okay, one success. One success? Okay, not bad. Um, yeah, you're easily moving through the city. And so... um, You're down below... 
uh, you're you're in sort of some tall streets, um, and you can see off in the distance. Uh, there's you can con you see uh, mortars constantly going up from this one location, and going toward and they're falling towards the uh, where you know the allies to be. Well, a mortar position would be uh, definitely an area of interest. So I'm going to go and see if I can scout that out a bit. Okay. Um, you climb up to the top of the roofs. Uh, these are like really close together buildings. Um, and you can look over and you definitely see like it's a group of uh, Panzer Grenaders. Uh, just they have a boatload of shells and just a couple mortars and they're just chucking them. Uh, constantly in in the direction of where the allies are attacking. Does anybody there look vaguely French? Uh... <laughs> a few of them, yes. Do any of them look like officers? Uh, that you can't tell from the distance you're at. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get a little closer then. I, I don't want to directly engage these guys. Okay. But I am going to, uh, to signal to Shinyi and Howie that there is a uh, a hostile mortar emplacement that could be an area of interest. Okay. Um, Howie and Jingyi, what do you do? You follow along? What, do you want to take any action? What do you want to do? He's telling you that uh, he sees a, a mortar position, and uh, he's going to try to get a little closer. I hope oh. this does not end in combat, Mander. Worst case scenario, we lob a few grenades in there and let the ammo cook off. <laughs> um. Yeah, you're able to make your way across um, the the rooftops, Benji, uh, but you're not able to like there. The the buildings just don't go in that direction. Uh, you know that you'll probably have to get back down to the ground and maybe go up the building that they're in. Yeah. So, I don't want to get too close to these guys because they might just shoot us. Yeah, they're on the roof. Um, you can kind of spot the building they that they're they're in. It's just kind of off on its own, um, sort of like in a town square, and they're just lobbing uh, mortars, you know, hundreds of yards distance the other way. Um, and they have a guard or two at the bottom floor uh, behind some barricades. Do they look French or German? Um, these two guys down on the bottom are German, as far as you can tell. I have an idea. Okay. You want to lure the guards out? She's going to take out a little bag that says meth oh, in God. German. Okay, and so tie it really to a string. This meth. Okay. And just fling That's, it towards them. What, that, oh, that, this is this Looney Tunes? Almost definitely going to not work. You don't know Commando. I Man do know I'm a Commando. <laughs> I've done stuff like this. Watch this instead. Man in withdrawal. I'm going to just like whistle from like an alleyway nearby just like something i can't whistle very loudly but just something like that uh and then are, wait you, you can hear them like discussing like what uh, and then they're arguing if they should even be like dumb enough to go check out a whistle um but the one guy's like just go check it out quit being a wuss um so he's one of them's cautiously moving towards your position with his gun ready and the other is just standing watching him. Kind of, yeah. He he's watching around him. Got a got a side eye towards his buddy who's walking towards you. Should I break out the meth bag now, Commander? Not yet. Wait till he rounds the corner and breaks line of sight with his buddy. I and don't him. break out the meth. Garrow, I mean, that's when Garrow. we're going to take him out. You, you could try if you wanted to. Um, he gets what? close to the corner. Like you guys are just around the corner, and um. He's coming up to the corner and he yells something out in German that equates to like, hey, whoever's there, come out. I'll say Nick Schiessen, Nick Schiessen. Which means don't shoot, don't shoot. And then I'll garrote him or garrote or whatever the word is. <laughs> garrote? Garrote. Oh, shit. Which is um, also a fucking word. He, he, uh, he demands that he's just like, come out now or, or I'll, I'll, Toss a grenade in your your direction. Yeah, well, so I'm gonna like head out. I'm basically I'm gonna try to draw his attention so that 
one of them can get the drop on him. All right. Howie, how are you? Cause like, so like you're on one side of the alleyway and like, he's at the corner. Um, you're going to have to sneak up behind him somehow. How, how are you going to manage that? Or you just... like... <laughs> I feel like I just want to be like, I just want to like jump in. <laughs> I don't, I'm not conceptualizing how the, uh, the layout is here exactly it's a street corner basically and you're at the at the edge of a building um okay and so he's at one you guys are on one side sort of like trying to draw him out he's at the other being extremely cautious because um this seems kind of fucked up um and he's demanding in german that you guys come out or he's going to toss a grenade around the corner i have my trank knife and tranks in general uh we look this is beyond that point um so yeah i'm gonna like try to just frantically uh address him and talk to him just try to keep him i so thought I, we were trying to get information out of these bastards we're i trying speak to german scout yeah you speak german so my so then you do the talk and i'll just yeah and i'm a con artist <laughs> uh i feel like do you expose do you come around and like show yourself or what do you do? Yeah, without I'm gonna drop my axe so that nothing is showing no weapons you, on me. You've got like a, a coat on, so it kind of hides what you're you're carrying. So you go out with hands up, uh, and what do you say to him so that he doesn't shoot you? Um I'm gonna and I would have a German accent, so I'm just gonna say, uh, I'm kind of lost, but because uh, I, I feel like I would have a German accent enough that he would immediately tag me as as actually German and not someone just using not just someone speaking German. Okay. Uh he doesn't shoot you immediately and he demands to know uh who are you and why are you here and why haven't you escaped the city yet? Um That's classified and I am going to use chameleon. <laughs> yes. Okay. Which does what? Basically, I can be whoever I want right now by blowing a fortune. Oh, and I and I preemptively now also have papers to be somebody. Okay, so I'm gonna be um somebody who is sort of medium level Nazi party. Mm-hmm. Who I don't I don't know names. Hans that makes that's a German name, right? Yeah. Sure. Um, <laughs> and uh and um Hans i have some I, yeah um, okay. I have some i have some business in the city to take care of before i go uh but i can't tell I you about it the red he um you and i'll show him my papers you produce some papers and he kind of like nudges you away with the gun as he uh starting looked at at your papers and reading through them um he's completely distracted now jingy and benji what do you do um okay so i'll draw my well rod basically a suppressed tube um and put a very quiet round into the guy watching him basically i'm gonna step behind so that the guys so that the other soldier's back is to me and i'm just gonna shoot his buddy oh okay i got it the well with a it's with with my well rod which is a commando's weapon it's essentially a the entire barrel is a suppressor Got thing it. is yeah, yeah. quiet as fuck it's uh, such a bizarre weapon though okay cool yeah take a shot um okay let's see it's gonna be Two a difficult 20. shot because you're just stepping out and sort of like free firing two two successes yep nice just what you needed um uh it shoots him in the chest and he's just sort of taken aback for a moment that he's been shot and the other guy doesn't even realize it at the moment Zheng Yi, what do you do Perfect. Kenny's going to look at the commander, just, you know, do the should I take him out sign. Just going to put my finger to his lips and say, maybe he could, basically, maybe he's got some info, but go for it. Your finger to his lips? So you just. <laughs> no, my finger to my lips. I'm not just like <laughs> reaching around to the other guy being like, shh, shh. It's going to be okay. Go. <laughs> it's going right. to be okay. I just shot your friend. Don't worry. <laughs> Can Chin you do a martial arts pin on this guy? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh give me a combat. Okay. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to pin him. Give me five. So then plus I can Okay. 
gonna come here. Okay, yeah, that's two successes. Oh wow. So the whole scene is um how he steps out, says in German, hands the guy some fake papers, guy's distracted. Benji just steps out, hits the guy squaw in the chest. Um, he's over there gasping for air, and then Jing Yi just flips out, lands on this dude, and just like <laughs> wrenches him into the ground. Um, these two have no fucking idea what just hit them. Um, Listen, I'm I'm not doing any more of this American tactics bullshit. How we translate for me? <clears throat> Listen here, I have what you want. Show, show him I think man. he just wants to live at this point. <laughs> if you're a good dog, you get treats. Understood? I want information about what is this man's name? Um, you're looking Mr. for... Mr. French Officer. Yeah, the French Officer's name is... Uh... Uh, where'd it go? Marcel Perdot. He's a Vichy Officer. Yeah, you... Marcel, Marcel Perdot or the Red Perdot. You can provide me with either of these information. You get your meth and you get to live. If you don't, then let's just say you will die with a smile on your face. Uh, Benji, you notice the other guy is like trying to pull himself up. What do you do? <sighs> I'm just going to shoot him again. Okay. You, he's down. <laughs> Um, yeah, come on. I rolled a one and a two to yeah, shoot him again. You're you're fine. Uh, yeah, you just, just clock him in the go. head, and there's just the spurt, and he goes down instantly. Um, he so roll me an intimid roll me a persuasion and will, uh, Jing Yi. I'm translating. Would it be me doing that? Yeah, you can, mm-hmm. you're easily translating, and she's uh, okay. Cool, and she's got. And she easily just brings out all of her stuff that she's offering to him. Um, he is receptive and just kind of like nods and just like, "I want to live. I want to live. I want to live." <clears throat> Good dog. He tells you <laughs> that. Um, he doesn't know that name, but he knows that there are some Vichy soldiers upstairs that maybe you could talk to or interrogate with your very effective methods. He says, you think sarcastically, but maybe not. And yeah, she's just going to put her knee a little bit more on his Adam's apple. Just for throwing some sound. Talking a lot of shit for a guy whose buddy just got killed and is literally <laughs> pinned to the sidewalk. Like. Right. He's um, having a bad day. Um, yeah, she's just going to blow some smoke in his face, pop a piece of meth in his mouth. And remember, all of her meth is laced with cyanide. What? Why, why, why are you killing him? He could help us. He could help us? Didn't he just say he could help us? He wants to live? I mean, he wants to live. He tells you that there's some Vichy soldiers up there. The Nazi. The Any officers? He's, he says no, but he says, like, if you're looking for officers, the Vichy soldiers might know where the officers went. Okay, we thank got you. All the information out. Yep, then I'll just shoot him. Yeah. I mean, to be uh, fair, he could. Pop, I'm not gonna let you poison him. Pop his arsenic. Okay, so you can poison. <laughs> I can't poison him, but you can shoot him. Yes, because one is pretty much instantaneous, and the other is actually very painful, even though it is cyanide. It melts your organs. Cyanide is not a good way to die. To our other group, um, Bo. You got uh, mm-hmm. Tessa and Abby with you. Um, you roll up to the area, like the town square, and like there's a city hall building that's completely trashed. Uh, one side, there's like the library on one, the other, there's a cathedral. Um, I guess it would be a mosque in this case, probably. Um, uh, what you do? And that's how you catch a pig that's been greased. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's find ourselves a nice little alleyway over here and uh, park all inconspicuous slack. And uh, I'll pull it down like probably like two alleyways down from the library. Okay. Um, I'll pull up probably about like 100 yards in, um, 50 to 100 yards in. So it's not like right there as you'd look in and draw suspicion. And then I'll kind of stack some loose uh, debris or garbage kind of around it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that way, 
even going forward or backwards, it's light enough that we can easily blow through it, but it does block field of view from anybody, anybody who's curious enough to just look down random alleyways. Okay. Uh, yeah, your car looks trashed, so to speak. Um, what you do? Uh, I throw it in park, turn the engine off, and kick my feet up on the dash, cross my arms. All right, now you little ladies never know when you're done. Uh, I'm gonna be chilling right here. Uh, I got a little creak in my back that needs to get work done. So, uh, you know, and plus, you know, me and the libraries, they we don't, I, I, I let's just say I don't own a card back home, so I may never have stepped foot inside of one. Uh, so I don't know what I good I would be doing. Uh, you know, you know, uh, my mama used to say I only know uh, twenty letters of the alphabet, not 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 all thirty of them. So uh, <laughs> let's just uh, go ahead and uh, uh, you you all look for what you're looking for, and uh, I'll be here. All right. Plus, I know uh, uh, you guys are in each other's hands. Uh, I know you both are very capable, so I'm not going to worry too much. Uh, but if I hear a hollering or, you know, heavy boots running down the, the street towards y'all, I'll be sure to kick it in gear and <laughs> come check, see what's uh, the happen to hap. But my dear Beauregard, if, if we leave you out here, that means you're going to be out here alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In a city full of, of Nazis alone. Well, our car looks like a dumpster, and uh, I'm gonna be staying inside said dumpster. So, you know, unless it's a dumpster diver, the only thing I have to worry about is I uh, just pat uh, my shotgun. Me and Samantha will take care of uh, any dumpster divers. If you say so, but there's a higher possibility that you will die. Alone. And cold. <laughs> well, okay. So the alone part was always going to happen. Uh, the dying part, I feel like the higher possibility that happened has been the truth since they pulled me out of that line where I was getting my head shaved. So, um, yeah. It, so basically, it's all washed at this point, I think. Like a mortar lands, the alleyway over explodes. Okay, so I'm gonna grab Samantha and uh we'll go inside the library. All right, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, no, you uh no, nah, I was a great thought I had all of my own. And uh definitely this is not because um yeah, so yeah, I, and I will just, like start taking the like fumbling around, like taking the keys out of the ignition and all that jazz. Okay, cool. Um Library Main Square is uh, a couple of blocks down um, from where you parked. Uh, you can already you see like people fleeing in different directions every once in a while um, as you're out there. But uh, you see um, a group of men standing outside, milling about, fiddling about with something. Like directly outside the library, like the main entrance. Yes. Is there a side entrance? Uh, like not that where a book depository would be. Uh, you're not quite sure. You'd have to move up there. You'd have to stealthily move up there. Okay. Uh, these people got uniforms on. Looks like it, but you can't tell from this distance. You have to get closer. Okay. okay. I am going to get a bit closer. Roll sure and agility. All of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, anybody that's trying to move close. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, ladies. No. Oh, you... oh, Holy no. shit! No way! Holy shit! No way! Holy What's shit! I'm so glad I'm using my dice that I was getting mad at for last week's D and D game because they're still cursed. Clearly, I rolled a one and a two. Wow! Look oh at you. God. Yes. And like I have no stealth skill, and my agility is a six. <laughs> so three successes. Bogart is one sneaky motherfucker. Ladies, <laughs> just don't roll it. Okay, two successes. Cool. Uh, Abby, what'd you get? Three. Oh wow, three. Okay, cool. Um, you are one with the the bricks and mortar, um, and those guys are distracted by something. You're not quite sure. Um, 
so you, yeah, you slip down the side alley, uh, um, on the side of the library and start making your way down there. Um, Bo, give me an observation and insight roll. <clears throat> Okay, I don't have any only have insight. All right. Mm, less good. Uh, can I spend one of my momentum to, spend, to roll another die? Yeah, sure. All right, let me do that. Hm. Did not help. No successes. No successes? Okay. Um, you hear them talking, but uh, doesn't signify anything. Um, all right, so you're on the side uh, alley of the, the library. It's a big stone and brick building um very old probably from ancient times and just been refurbished over the years uh and uh it's pretty big pretty big there's an old like side entrance um looks like they converted uh one of the one of the larger doors into like a loading dock sort of a section okay so i guess we go for that sure Better than trying to bust down through the front. There are all those fellas up there. Uh, you go in. Uh, it's it. The door has actually been blown off. Um, so you step inside, uh, and it's very musty. You kind of smell the the smell of smoke. Um, just uh, and it's just like a musty sort of library, old bookstore sort of smell. Um, yeah. You're in what looks to be like storeroom of some sort, bunch of shelves, bunch of old boxes and crates. Um, nothing. Would it by of... chance be the stacks department that we're in, or is it literally just storage? It's literally just storage, like old shelves, um, old furniture. Uh, just looks like they, you know, brought got brought in some new stuff, took out the old stuff, and just didn't get rid of it. Sort of situation. Okay. Uh, I guess we, is there, so the door leading into the main part of the building, is it closed? Is it, it is intact? closed, yes. Okay. Can I, what is the equivalent of a listen check in this game? Observation. Sure. And uh, insight. Sure. Two of my best rolls. Um, I'm going to put my ear against the door and see if I could hear anything. Okay. Ooh, that is two successes. Two successes. Nice. Uh, this door moves into sort of a, you can kind of see through, there's a window in it. Uh, it moves into a back hallway or side hallway, you're not sure, of the main library. Um, but it's it's an old building, so like there's a section to this hallway that has like those really fine, nicely wooden arches that open up into the library proper. Um, that's what you can see, and you can you can hear those men laughing and that's all you can really hear uh it's very faint though but they're very loud and boisterous mm -hmm. all right so i think um i'm going to very carefully very quietly open the door mm -hmm. and um so the issue is is i have no idea the layout of this library um but i am assuming that there is some kind of directory in the main branch of the library that could show me where the various now that, are. now that you're out here you realize that this was probably at one time a very old church mm -hmm. um very large cathedral converted into a library um mm -hmm. so you get in but it's there's a lot of hallways a lot of side passages um and it looks like they they converted the main cathedral part um to like a, a very wide open library okay so i just have to start strolling the aisles to figure out what i'm looking for yep um and i am very specifically looking for uh things um let's see uh specifically like history books about the occult kabbalah text i'm looking for thelemite texts okay. um uh fetishism in west africa 
et cetera, et cetera. You can use your academia and insight to roll that. Okay. To see if you can find the right section. Sure. I got a five and a two. Got a five and a two. Nice. Yes. Um, you easily are slinking through the different aisles. Um, and you can see that there, you notice that there's a big wide set of doors that are been flung open. And then that's where you can hear those guys out front. Um, they're, they turn like the, a middle sort of, uh, pulpit thing into like a, a reference desk. And then there's just stacks and shelves and everything everywhere. Um, but you think you easily sort of figure out their, um, their cataloging system and you move towards the occult section Bo and um abby what are the two of you doing while <clears throat> tessa's browsing the library um i'm listening to those men seeing if i can pick up on their conversation uh roll observation and insight real quick Um, three successes. Three successes. All right. You actually start intently listening to what they're saying, and you kind of move up towards uh, the front of the library. In really annoyingly thick Texan accents, mm -hmm. they are talking about setting traps to kill Nazis. I like these guys already. No, you don't. You're not even here. You didn't even know I'm just saying the, the voice of God says I like these, or the voice of the annoying angel on God's shoulder says I like these guys already. So your your ass are full. Yeah. He also liked books, so it makes sense. So she's just sitting there listening, just kind of being attentive, making sure no one's coming or anything, just like pops up that she may need to stab in the foot <laughs> um so with your three successes you kind of pick up on a hint of sarcasm in their tones where they're like yeah we're texans we're gonna kill um we're gonna kill them nazis right yeah we're gonna kill lots of nazis it's gonna be great yeehaw and the yeehaw is just kind of the icing on the cake where you're like okay something's weird about these dudes is there like a crack or anything or a, a small opening where I can peek out at them um no the only way that you can see, like every once in a while one of them comes inside and sets something down in the uh the narthex area I think that's what you call that the front part of a church um yes. and uh uh and then they walk back outside but it looks like they're laying wires and setting something down um there at the front of the church and they if you sit there long enough you'll watch them and they're they're like getting further into the church with whatever they're setting up church library okay so i tell Bo and tessa they're yeah, kind of close uh Bo, what are you doing specifically well, I, he was sitting on one of the pews, well, sitting, laying down on one of the pews, just kind of arms crossed, looking straight up at the ceiling, uh, counting holes in the ceiling, basically. Um, but when uh, Abby comes by and um, tells him about what they're doing, his interest is immediately piqued by, you know, you know kindred folk. But then uh, when she says there's something fishy going on and then through her describing what they're doing, uh, can my focus and explosives, can I realize they're trying to rig this place to blow? <clears throat> uh, yeah, instantly, like the Texas accents, you're like, what the fuck? But um, the way she describes uh, them laying things down, you're like that. No, they're setting traps. And then, like, something. putting wire to it and running it back out. Like, yeah. <clears throat> uh, all right, I'll just be like, uh, so, uh, I don't know what's going on with the whole, like, 
the yeehaw fellas over there. Um, but uh, what you described uh, sounds an awful lot like someone about to make this whole place uh, meet its maker. So um, uh, I believe it was at this time we're going to need to ask uh, Miss Tessa to uh, expedite uh, her uh, her search here. Maybe uh, uh, borrow a few books as opposed to reading them all here. Uh, I think uh, I don't I don't think the librarian's going to mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm moving as quickly as I can. A little bit of patience, please. Uh, uh, out now. Uh, um, can you? Uh, would you say your search and skills are faster than uh, the chain reaction of uh, a fire meeting oxygen? Because uh, they're about to blow this place up. Maybe just pick like ten more, five more books off the shelf, and we need to get the hell out of here. Not that easy. What I'm looking for isn't exactly part of common knowledge. I can't just pick a reference book from. Okay, I'm, all right. So bag. you're taking this tone with me that I don't really like. Um, and I, okay. So just just remember that you can't read books when you're dead. Well, a- howdy there, partners. I thought I heard the Queen's English being spoken in this Nazi dirt hole. Says one of them what? walking up to you. And oh, all right, no. all right, all we'll right. Pause for a second uh, for a quick break. I've got, I've got my response. I got my response ready. All right, you hold on to that for about They're five, crazy. ten minutes. All right, we'll be back.
the question. What do you think is the best cake? I said it. It was carrot cake. He's wrong. Just like nine. You're a close. monster. No, I what? No, so you eat the carrot cake, man, and then so you get, sorry, and then is, you get that like. That is a very old. Man. It helps my digestion. <laughs> <laughs> What's your you favorite fruit, Ryan Sean? Matt prunes. Like making fun of the DM right now. Can we just talk about that? She's literally got her life in her hand. Why are we picking on the the, the game master? Anyway, so we're back. Um, <laughs> because sometimes you gotta t- tease the game master a bit. Remind him who's in charge. You say this, Harry, but I have never seen a character of yours that has not put the fear of God into me. Like, yeah. you say this as if you constantly aren't running with a death wish. My favorite fruit, by the way, I'm I'm a big mango person. Um, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, mangoes, mangoes fuck. Mangoes, mangoes, good. mangoes can get it. Yeah. That's valid. That's Did valid. you say mangoes can fuck? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. said mangoes fuck. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Okay, um, so it's, it's it's slang that the youth use when something mango. Fucks, it is very good. What? <laughs> Out of all the oh, I'm the sorry, world. yellow cake so patty. You're mango? not going for mango? Okay. okay. There's okay. the uh, fucking like, OG like, mango apple or person. No, it's mango or a person. Right no. Anyway, so when last we you left, fuck um, them. yeah, Patty and or uh uh uh. Fuck, I don't know what a game but I'm not picky. Abby and Abby and Tessa. Yes, they were people. in an Abbey, turn, converted yeah. into a ah. um, library. But we're not going to deal with them right now because <clears throat> we're going to go back to um, uh, the captain and Howie and Zheng Yi. So, uh, mangoes are disgusting. What? Also, Lupa, yeah, Lupa and Zheng Yi. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ban that person. Plus one. Disgusting. Plus one. Plus one. Wrong. When I say throw hands, I love you both with my heart and souls. And that was good soup last Friday. But also, you're wrong. Wow. And I love you. Okay. Who said that? So, um, Benji, uh, the the guy says that um, there's some Vici soldiers on the roof. What do you do? Uh, well, I guess we're uh, going up to the roof then. Um, is that are the mortars on the roof? Yeah, they're mortaring from the roof. And what is this? Is this like a platoon strength of dudes? A uh, couple, a fire team? You counted uh, five dudes. Okay, so like a squad. That's yeah. very manageable. Yep. So let's get this shit done. Okay. Um there's there's a there's a burn it's kind it's an old burned out building at this point um there's uh an old wooden staircase uh that leads up that has seen better days um how do you want to do you just want to jump them do you want to what what's your <clears throat> what's your tactics here so there's are they all vichy or are there like a f- couple Germans, a couple French. His specific words were, there are some Vichy up there, which means you kind of gather that there's uh, a mix of Nazi and Vichy up there. Well, the Germans are the one who are, Germans are the ones who are the real diehards, so those are the ones we take down first. Speed and violence, they won't be able to hear us coming because of those mortars, so hit them hard, hit them fast. Don't give them time to realize what's happening. Kill the Germans, take the French. Okay. Um, excellent. Uh, so you make it up to the top, and you can see that they're behind like a, a row of sandbags and the uh, the sort of concrete wall that serves as a makeshift railing in, in the roof. Um, they got two mortars. Uh, they got a stack of mortar shells. Uh, and then there's two guys loading the mortar, uh, carrying the mortars. There's two guys... Um, loading them and then you can tell there's basically like an officer that's just like yeah yeah carry on keep mortaring keep shelling the officer will have the best chance of knowing things so let's leave him breathing for now okay so yeah um so everyone else is manning the mortars yeah uh there's two and you can kind of you you get the sense of so the germans are the ones that are loading the mortars the there's two vici guys uh, and you can tell just by the difference in uniforms uh that are actually bringing the mortars to them and the officer themselves is uh uh a nazi officer 
So you kind of got the Nazis acting superior over the Vichys. So perfect. Um, is the Nazi officer like if I were to say grab the Nazi officer right now, how how seen would I be? Very seen um, because he's just like and he's mocking the Vichy guys every time they go to pick up mortars and load them. He's just like, OK, now load the mortar. OK. And... Oh, so they're really not going to care if I fucking yeah, ice no, these I, guys. I, I, I Maybe. You're you not sure. So. OK, let's Uh, I mean, yeah, they, they might be startled and try to shoot at us or something, but we can handle them. OK, uh, let's take these. Let's uh, first guy. So mm. how many guys are there? There are five. There's two Vichy, three uh, Germans. Yeah, two. So, the, the Germans are uh, act, are working the mortars. You got the two Vichys who are loading or bringing them over, and then there's an officer kind of a, to the side, just um, supervising, basically. I feel like it would be wise if we take the officer hostage. Yeah, I'll take the. I'll I'll just tackle and subdue the officer while you two can handle the. Uh, handle the two other Germans and the French if they try anything. But, okay. you know. Right. Oh, God. I can't. Harry showed me this video by this racist-ass white chick, which is called I Want to Be Ninja. It's the funniest <laughs> thing. It's so good because it's like this bizarre, like, it's so it's the girl who made Murphy beds, the beds that go up in the wall. It's like at the launch event of her party and she has one line in the song referencing her bed and just use the rest of the excuse to be racist. And the whole thing, the whole time, the cameraman focuses on her in the side of the shot. But like in the center of the shot is the one Asian person in the room looking incredibly uncomfortable. And it's like highest tier cringe. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll make sure you witness this if, if something wait is was is nunchuck spider-man no i was just holding him and like he was leaning down he was what? but um yeah okay so uh who's attacking the uh the officer harry i'm take i'm tackling Benji, I'm gonna uh give me a combat and brawl or fighting and brawl okay say. let's see Oof. Wow, that's not good. Uh, fifteen and eighteen. Uh, is that of any? There are any of those? That successes? is just one success. Okay. Um. So this guy is really taken aback by you just lunging at him. Um. Which leaves you in a struggle with him. He failed his his counter rolls. Um. So basically, you kind of run him up against the side railing in uh you're, you're struggling he's like leaning back over the wall and then you're like trying to to subdue him uh howie and jung yi how do what do you do i'm gonna do what i did with the other guy and go to pin him okay uh give me give me some kung fu uh fighting and brawl or we'll say agility for you if, it, if it's higher yeah. All right. That is uh, two successes. Okay. Um, you, one of the Vichy guys uh, is just about to pick up a mortar and then you come out of nowhere and just do that whole like Black Widow thing, but you end up with like the, the your knee on the one guy's throat. Uh, Howie, there are three others. What do you do? One moment, I am looking at something to see if I want to use it. Okay. Still have no idea how tall Shinji is. I don't know if she projects short queen energy or tall queen energy. <laughs> I get short drug dealer vibes. <laughs> All right. Very Curse, vibe. Curse of Cthulhu. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, shit. The spellcaster calls on Cthulhu's dreams made flesh and projects strange portents and terrible visions of the god who sleeps in the city of Ryla. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that. Close. Uh, sowing terror and confusion in his enemies' ranks. Individuals and units affected by the curse become terrified and disoriented, losing focus on the task in hand and suffering insignificant or suffering significant damage to their willingness to fight. Okay. 
I have no idea how spell casting works, so help me out. Uh, I was just trying to look that up, but fucking Adobe just fucked because Adobe. And for everyone's context, this is I magically got this when I looked at the tablet. If that wasn't you did obvious. Okay, yeah. so eighty-seven. Uh, <clears throat> Magic, magic, uh, curse of Cthulhu. So, um, you can okay, call it. Did you get okay? Um, it tells you what to roll academia, yes, plus will, will, we'll go with that. Um, it's a difficulty of two to pull this off, okay. Um, let's see if any of my focuses. No, I don't have any focuses in academia. Uh, you okay? How, did you get any successes? Or are you looking for one more? I haven't. Oh, I haven't rolled yet. Oh, okay, gotcha. So it's sorry. I'm looking again. Um, one success. How can I bump that up to two? If you you can spend a fortune. Uh, if you had any momentum, uh, either, either of those, I will spend a fortune. Okay. So you, you guys are down to one fortune. Go ahead and roll that. We'll say it works. Oh, spending oh, is this every, everybody? Yeah. Everyone. It's a pool of fortune. Um, uh, but it's, it, it restarts. Refresh? Yeah. It restarts every, every session. So you're good. Okay. Um, since you're spending your fortune, it kicks off. Um, and for a moment, uh, all in these classrooms. Everybody, I'm mostly looking for that stun effect to yes. like. Since you spin a fortune, everybody that is your enemy, um, and you're over there just like muttering nonsense, um, and all your companions hear you doing this and kind of look over you like, what the fuck is going on? Um, and you mutter I don't this nonsense. Giving him any opium. <laughs> <laughs> and for a moment like you just stare you're staring straight ahead but somehow you're staring each of them uh individually straight in the eyes and then they all have moments of terror in their minds and are just like dealing with what they're seeing in their heads for uh a moment and they're all completely stunned so i'm like galadriel if she had the wrong ring yeah that's in two weeks but yeah that's uh <laughs> That that's what's uh, and we'll say since you spin a fortune, like they're just stuck in this weird state of like blasted brain holes. Blasted brain holes, All right? Mm -hmm. And you take oh shit, you take um instantly um six stress, like okay, um. To Xingyi and Benji, uh, the guys that you had subdued, they have a look on their faces as if they were screaming, but they're not. Like, they're trying to scream, but they're almost, like, too terrified to scream. Xingyi you know? is going to look over at Benji just like... I, I don't know either. <laughs> All right, well, you know, just tie him up, I guess. Uh, and then over to the the Vichy soldiers. English? Uh, not so good. It's not, and uh, they're actually stuck for a moment. Like you, um, you kind of have to slap them out of it, and they're just like, uh, uh, "What? What? English? Uh, English? English? Do you speak it? We oui, uh, little English. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, what? What? What is the one we're looking for? Uh, oh fuck! I keep forgetting the French officer. Mar name. Marcel. Mmm, look at you. Uh, Prudhoe. Marcel Prudhoe. Marcel uh, Prudhoe. Where is he? Uh, they kind of look at each other and like, what? Why, why are you looking for him? What? Is, what? Tell me. Uh, he, he was hanging around those SS, the, the, trying to get in good with them and get, and get out, but I don't think he did. Where can we find him? Uh, I, think he, I think he might actually be dead. Um, but uh, who... Why? Why do you want to? Why do you want Marcel? We want the Red Widow. 
And they all kind of go, and even the Germans kind of snap out of it for a second as they hear that name. They're, and every, the whole roof just gasps, and they're like, the, the Red Widow? Yes. You, you're looking for, for them. Did I stutter? There were, the, uh, I remember Marcel. He was talking to an SS commander, um, about helping the widow. If I remember, they were trying to get something out. They were trying to get out of, out of the town before the the allies attack. I don't know if they made it. The Mar Marcel was trying to organize, um, he was trying to organize a ship, but I don't know if it was out of here or another town. There, there, there was also talk of a train into Tunisia. I don't, I don't, I don't. It was one of the two. I don't a remember. Ship. A train into Tunisia. Well, we just well that train didn't happen because we destroyed it. Didn't no, it? this would be a different train. So um, okay, okay, thank you. You guys Sorry. came from Casa, so it's like Casablanca, Algiers, Tunisia's over here. So um, okay, um, if they take the boat, they won't get farther. The Allied naval blockade is thorough. They're not getting anywhere on a boat. This this came. I, this was before the Allies attacked, so I don't. It was just before. I I I don't know. Um, God, what was what was? But he knows he knows the name of the SS officer that he was talking to, and points to the commander, or points to the. I'm going to uh, turn my officer. attention to the, the officer. Yeah. Does he now? We. Oui. Well, uh, tell me, commander, would you be willing to? Uh, would you so kindly impart that information upon us? Spits, laughs. Fuck you, American dog. The brass yeah, knuckle I figured that'd the be face. the answer. Yeah. <laughs> you brass knuckle him in the face? Like, no. Yeah. We need his jaw to be functioning. Oh. Uh, you hear that jaw crack, um, and uh, he spits, tooth falls out. And he immediately replies, fuck you, American dog. Okay, Shinyi's gonna walk over. Okay, how about this? Um, you're an Shinyi officer. Your job over. is to... Oh, yep, yeah, sorry. I know what you like. She waves <laughs> a little flag of death in front of him. You're really trying to make this work. Hey! <laughs> hey, listen. If, if just any... Any amount of our pillow talk has taught me anything. Nazis had a mess problem, okay? Wait, hold on. Reverse that a little <laughs> bit. Your pillow I talk, talk about... is about Nazis and their Our pillow drug... talk is just a stream of consciousness. You no know way. Like I'm not I... no and I'm a history wow. student, so get, that's what get, that stream of consciousness is. World War II uh, <laughs> pillow talk and also castle midgets. Yes, so it used to be that medieval uh, like medieval them, uh, know, medieval right? lords would keep dwarves as pets. <laughs> okay, so Xingyi, um, he looks at the little baggie that you have, or the syringe, or whatever, and he's just like, and he looks at Howie because Howie's having to do a little translating here. Looks at you straight up, and it's just like that'll just make the pain go away and make the torture easier. Yeah, we're not gonna. Okay, um, here's an idea. How about this? You're an officer. These are your men. Mm -hmm. And your job is to make sure that your men survive. I have an idea. You had some pain. What if I could make things nice? And oh, I awesome. will activate my given thing. Oh, which no. is a pool of lips. Libs, libs, uh, lip, lipis? Lipis. Lip pool of limb. Limpid bliss. Limpid bliss. This was your spell. Yes. Sounds like a My Immortals chapter. Jesus Christ. I know, right? Where was this one? <laughs> I chose this that spell randomly. Four successes. Holy shit! Are you serious? Um. Yeah, I... Oh, you know what? I can just go to the thing that I sent you. <clears throat> so it's you just so like uh. My list. Where the fuck are you, Jane? Where are you? there you are? I can I can send. You no, I got it. I I got it. Oh, okay. So, um, utilizing this unholy spell. Good job, Jane. Uh, the spellcaster yeah! <laughs> causes a beautiful looking pool to form, 
which appears to gleam and glisten, containing beautiful bathing water nymphs and handsome satyrs. Any individual who passes within close range of the pool's seductive area of effect must try to resist its watery allure. Oh, God. Otherwise, just... you will. They will. Th they will throw down their weapons and attempt to bathe in the glorious waters floating there before sinking to drown in lipid, liquid ecstasy. This. Wow. Um. Okay. What an uh, utterly horrific spell! I love it. <laughs> yeah. Great for a drug dealer. Although she's not technically a drug dealer, she was just a surgeon. So, at the, at the, it, wow, and you, you keep saying that, but <laughs> the amount of drugs you have on hand leads me to believe otherwise. So, <laughs> Jing Yi mutters something just looking at this guy and just like, yeah. Um, you actually get one momentum. Um, okay, yeah, the, um, cool. Uh, this guy fails, we'll just say he fails, and immediately, like, He's bound, but he sees, and you guys all see it, um, but this affects enemies. Uh, and so, like, he's constantly, he, like, hears the siren's call. He There's, like, a really handsome satyr that's just like, yeah, come on, man. Drown yourself in the pool. It's great. <laughs> Take a bath. It's great. Um, and he just goes head first and is just trying to take a bath head first. Um and trying to swim and just like he he just pulls keeps... him back yep yeah before we let you swim you're going to tell us what we want to hear uh the four other dudes immediately try to do the same thing by the way <gasps> okay <laughs> how we hold them back we just need the information from the officer you hold back the officer i'll help howie with these four other dudes right, uh officer, it's a struggle gonna... give me uh give me <laughs> give me fighting and brawn Big no or no small numbers. Okay, that's uh, one success. Two one successes. Success. Uh, just from how uh, we'll use your two successes, Howie. Give me your uh, rolls. Two, two. Um, one, you managed to hold back three. One of them is just a lost cause, and immediately is in and just drowning. Um, Jingyi, you use like through your medical success and whatever you managed to get this uh officer in an absolute stupor and um what did you want from him specifically uh something about the red widow he, he was refusing to tell us further information about the red widow right? oh he yeah. gives you the name of an ss commander oh the ss commander that's right yes, he gives you the name of the ss commander his name is hans hansel Hans Hansel. And you know that What a name. Right? It's great. Um uh he's trying to escape at the docks as far as he knows, or he's leading like the exhibit exhibit uh their uh exodus out of the city um for a lot of the lead elite officers and stuff. Um mm. he'll know how the the Red Widow got out of out of town. But that's all, right. all they know. Yeah, Jimmy's just gonna get off of him and just shove him into the pool. Uh, yeah. So the officer goes and eventually drowns. Uh, what what do you guys do with the other other soldiers? Um, well, I'm not gonna kill uh unarmed surrendering people. So I'm gonna give the the French a kick on the ass and send them on their way. And the Germans, well, you actually have to do, go so far as to drag them all the way down uh to the bottom floor and hold them there under like you have to put like debris on them and hold them down and they're just kind of left screaming wanting to take a bath um <laughs> but you realize out of the presence of the the bath itself and it'll eventually disappear and they'll go back to normal um okay well i guess they will just have they'll just have to wait to feel a little better okay uh back to the library um, Texas man walks up and is excited to hear somebody speaking English in town and, uh, looks at all you. He's like, you fellow allies. Well, to go back, what he said was yes. speaking the queen's English. Yes. So Bo just goes, uh, I don't know who the hell you are. Uh, but I do know one thing 
for shit certain. And that is uh we especially if you try to pass yourself off as a Texan, uh you sure as shit ain't calling it the Queen's English. Uh so I don't know who the hell you are, but uh and I'll just like kind of very casually like hold Samantha with two hands in front of me. But uh I reckon you're gonna be telling us who you are right about now. Uh well I am Commander John Johnson of the <laughs> <laughs> now I know you're trying to take me for not a very smart feller, but uh, there ain't no one named John Johnson from Texas. So why don't you try again? And remember, uh, this only needs to be chambered once to put you full of little holes. So uh, next X is uh, X marks a spot, and I will uh, level the shotgun at him. Well, son, you can shoot that shotgun and. Uh... My buddies hear that go off, then um, they're gonna blow up this this the at least the entrance to this library sky high, and uh, I don't think you want that now, do you? No, I uh, see, I, I don't. But the whole pumping of the shotgun and leveling at you that was just for show. Uh, so my friend and I'll just kind of nudge the shotgun to uh, Abby, who I'm sure by this point has gotten behind him and has like. A knife oh, or something no. to his throat. Uh, yeah. So she could I'm get right there and the give you a nice little steel kiss on the neck there. Uh, Abby, what are you and doing I'll to hold this dude? A knife to his temple. Oh, he just kind of like looks at the knife and he's just like, uh, so, uh, Shiza. <laughs> ah, uh huh. So I don't know a lot of your German and how that's said, but I do know swear words, just a few couple of languages. And uh, Scheisse is, uh, I believe, is what you're going to mean to say. So here's the deal you're going to call in your friends, you know, one by one. You're going to say, hey, I don't care what you make up and tell them to come in here. And then uh, they're going to get round up by us and you're all gonna sit here and you're gonna think about what you did maybe realize you're on the wrong side of the war here because now that the good old us of a's in it it's just a pretty much done deal at this point and uh if you ever say another word or point another gun or even try to fake a texas accent ever again well I'm just going to turn around, close my eyes, plug my ears, and let Abby do whatever she wants to do with you. Are we uh, crystal on that? Do any of you speak German? I think Howie was the only one that actually did. Am I correct? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Abby, this guy starts to utter something not English. What do you do? I'm going ahead and press the knife through his temple. Okay, cool. Um, he gets out a syllable that starts to sound German, and you just jab that straight through his temple, and uh, he, he ceases to speak. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, you actually did. I thought you were kidding. Holy shoot. Holy. Oh, <laughs> oh, I oh have bad seen. line of business. For... That was probably the most gentlemanly thing I have ever seen you do. John, John, you okay in there? Oh, no. I will, uh, since they're, since they're sticking with their southern accents, I will get my Tay house going on and put a little bit of Texas, a little bit of Texas on it. Uh, I'm all right there, Ricky, but, uh, if you could come on in here and okay, give us a hand, just give me <laughs> insight. <laughs> and I don't, I just want you to straight up roll luck. Cause just to get the name Ricky out of thin air, <laughs> you know what? Roll, roll, roll two dice. Um, okay. You know the numbers. Okay. All right. An eight and a seven. I'll allow it. Good enough. Yes. Um, 
uh, I'm just random on the Ricky. Uh, what did you say to them? Uh, to co- you know, co- come on in here. Uh, you know, give give me a hand. Oh, okay. <clears throat> you 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 sure about that, John? You want us to? You need you need help. You want us to come on in there? You don't want us to like do the thing? Uh. No, no. See, I uh, I need you to come in here and uh, give this old cowpoke a hand. All right, we're gonna we're gonna send Johnny on in. All right. Perfect. Yeah, Johnny is who I had imagined for the job. Okay. Um. So Tessa, uh, this is all going on. Are you still just being a bookophile? Um, I am assuming that my very capable uh, friends are being very capable and creating shish kebabs out of Nazis. All right. So if I can hear them. I am still trying to very quickly, at the best of my ability, find the, the tomes that I need. Insight and academia God, real quick. God damn it. Bo's going to die for some goddamn books. They're important <laughs> to the storyline. That is two are su- they though <laughs> two successes um eventually once this is all said and done um you will f- you find a few books covering the topics uh that you th- that you think will be useful um <laughs> so back to Abby and Bo um this one like he in wearing American uniform, uh, hat and everything, uh, helmet walks in slowly with the, his rifle pointed. And, um, were you setting up an ambush where you just gotta sort of let him see you? What, what were you going to do? Yeah. I imagine that, uh, Abby would have kind of be like against the wall, like the blind turn corner wall as mm-hmm. he's walking in so that he can only see me. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I would just have my shotgun leveled. And as soon as he turns the corner, I'd just be like, and then point to his dead friend. So he comes in, uh, sees the shotgun, sees his dead friend is paused for a moment. Abby, what do you do? Pick up um, a copy of the Velveteen Rabbit and I beat the fuck out the back of his head like i'm gonna knock this son of a bitch unconscious um there it takes several limited thuds, edition. in limited edition in algiers no less um yeah. yes uh it takes a couple of whacks uh the first one he just like jolts for a moment and then you come back with the hardest swing which then sends his face into a shelf and then just on the floor a couple more whacks uh he's out um Johnny, you, you, and then he just drops all pretense and starts uh, asking something in German. I have a question. Uh, Sure. Um, And and according to the spell, I guess, I guess we're all pulling our spells out. Oh, fuck. According to the spell, it is the GM's discretion as to whether a body of water is large enough. I'm going to preface with that. Um, and knowing you, my darling friend, wonderful GM, apple of my eyeball, wearer of many hats, many nice hats, mm-hmm. um, I was Shameless. wondering if I could use my call of the deep and encourage this last remaining Nazi to shove his head into a toilet. <laughs> oh, huh. wow. We're just using magic at this point. Yeah, we're just, just all like, hey. Yeah. Uh, what I mean, was... he doesn't have to drown. He can actually technically break himself out, possibly, but maybe not in time. What was but the spell? Just as the ocean depths call to the deep ones and their hybrid children, so the spellcaster inflicts this curse upon their enemies who immediately experience a siren like call, forcing them to move towards the nearest body of water. Is this call of the depths? This is call of the deep. Yep. Okay. Um, roll, uh, Roll your will and persuasion. Can I also? Oh, I probably can't include my my occult in that, huh? Mm, no. Okay. Will and persuasion. Ah, damn, that's a one and a two. Ooh. 
Okay. Holy shit. I've never been so happy to get such small numbers in my life. That is the reason why I use these dice only for this game because they, uh, they they disappoint me every other game. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I didn't mean it. You're really wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't want to maim. Well, I don't want to kill them. I'm okay with a maiming, but like basically, what I want to do is like, so you know. If, like Tessa is just completely distracted and trying to get these books done and is just like, I am so sick of this. And she stomps down the hall with the books under her arms and in her backpack, gun still slung over her shoulder. And she just looks at the guy and says, go away. There is, Chris, well, there was uh two left. Uh, you, they've actually started to move up and you catch the eyes of one. And this just immediately sort of comes to mind. And, um, He's mesmerized for a moment, um, and it turns and walks right out to a fountain that's off in the town square. The other guy just kind of looks at him as, like, shouting something in German, um, has no idea uh, what the hell's going on, and, um, uh, oh, wow, that hits you for six strain, by the way, um, and, uh, yeah, uh, he, that guy's just kind of like, what, 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 what? Abby and Bo, what do you do? Hey, hey, come, come here, C come, come here, come here, C come here. Kind of looks at you and like he just turns and runs. It's still pretty loud from all the shelling that's going out through the city, right? Mm-hmm. There's a war going on all around you. Do you shoot him? It's like sight, like like sighting a clay pigeon. I shoot him. Uh, yeah, he somewhere in in just at the door, he gets like blasted in the back, um, and goes down. And uh, yeah, for a moment, there's that like brief moment of like, did that just happen? I'll make sure that I'm not sure how far out the door he got. I'll just make sure that his dead body is not visible from the street. I mean, for uh, all intents was. and purposes, it'll just look like he was a war victim. Like, all right, cool. Yeah, no <clears throat> real concern there. Uh, cool. So, yeah, uh, Tessa, you did manage to get a few books um, that you think will be helpful in the future, and uh, yeah, I would look at. I'd like to look at the attempted, um, uh, the attempted demolition they were trying to do. Uh, yeah, they. it looks like they were trying to rig the library, uh, knowing that people would be concerned about the libraries and what's in it. They were going to rig it for traps and just, it. you know, when they walked in, it would explode and kill people. Uh, if they ever got, if they got any part of it set up, I would like to disarm it. Uh, they um, didn't get very far. You guys kind of caught them in the middle of okay. their initial setup. Perfect. And Tessa is Perfect. just absolutely appalled. Like, this is a library. Who do they think they're going to be blowing up? A bunch of bloody academics? Uh, I will leave. Uh, I'll just take, like, all the firing pins um, from their explosives. Like, all, all the all the primers. Okay. I'll just take all that. So, basically rendering them useless. All right. Sounds good. Cool. Um, excellent. Uh, cool. So, hop in the car. Go pick up your friends. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll get in the car turn back look at them you know I'm, I, I guess I'm pretty glad you, you convinced me not to uh, stay out here you know I did miss out on a nap though throw it in the reverse peel out from the alleyway <laughs> I hand bow one of those old uh, butterscotch candies mm hmm mm -hmm. Neko wafers. Cool. Uh, eventually, um, you catch up uh, with your friends on the on the way to the library uh, on a street somewhere, and uh, you pick them up. And Benji, what do you what do you tell them? Uh, well, we have uh, we have a, an officer to go track down. He might know a thing or two. Uh, he's on the docks trying to leave. I mean, not sure what the end goal is there. It's city's thoroughly blockaded, but Hans, Hans. It, blo it might be blockaded for uh, a regular driver. 
I, you know, there is a reason they picked me, Kim, on your team. You no, know, right, right. I, I got you. No, I, I mean, we don't need to get out of the city. We need to get there before he does. So, you know, to the harbor, I guess. What is that? Done. How does that American classic go again, uh, Bo? Is it a, a go, daddy, go? I believe is the song. Man with the piano. Uh, I, I ain't much one for for the tunes. Uh, but well, anyways, sure. Alonzi, let's get going. Sounds like a plan. You uh, make your way down to the docks. Um, he, uh, Benji's right. There's a huge blockade going on. Um, and you can see that there are some gun emplacements trying to blast their way. And then there's a few German ships uh, out in the bay uh, trying to uh, take down the ships, but they're not having a great time of it. Um, you can see from your vantage point, there is a set of uh, Germans who are trying to get on a boat or at least get it uh, stocked so they could kind of like blast their way out um, into the open oceans. Um, yeah. What do you do? I don't think we should do our magic, considering how much water there is. Everybody who has magic just kind of looks at each other like, wait, what? <laughs> how many people can one cause to jump into the ocean? A novel. Uh, that's actually a good question. Probably worth an experiment. Um, I don't think we should be experimenting with that right now, Captain. We need information. Anyways, um... Perhaps we could get their attention. Yeah, so, doesn't uh, sound like a bad idea. How do we get their attention, however? We're not going to be able to. Those guns are deafening. They don't. They, they won't be able to hear us. What so, if we shoot someone but, in the leg? Yes. What if we just take them out one at a time? Or, um, oh, well, we can't risk just blowing up the uh, enemy commander. So I was going to recommend we rig the uh, ammunition, but that would be unwise. What did the buildings look like around here? Uh, just old, like, dock-like buildings. Um, uh, I know that's not a helpful description, but it looks like, <laughs> you know, a dock. Um, there's warehouses. There's uh, a lot of it's actually destroyed because it got shelled pretty heavily. Um, so you've got just, like, burnt-out warehouses, burnt-out, um, uh, like, factory-type buildings, burnt-out just ships all in the, in the bay. Uh, just half sunk. Um, they're actually working on one of the remaining few um, sort of patrol boats that is functioning and working. Hmm. So there's blockade, and um, it don't look like their ship's getting out. So uh, I'm sure this commander guy wouldn't have tried to go the harbor way if he knew he. That there wasn't for, for sure a way for him to get out. What about them? Um, what about them boats that go under like, the water? You think they're one of them around here? The U boat. Oh, that's a. I mean, they have minesweepers and destroyers, but you're right. If they, they might be able to slip by. So, I'm not sure what we can do about that though, because we're up here. And they're down there. If they're in a U boat, or well, well, wait, well, check. The are there U boat pens? Like, are there U boat pens on the docks? Like. I will tell or places you, where a U-boat would dock and you insight know. and tactics. Okay, I'm good at these. These are two skills I'm good at. God damn it, an 18 and a 16. Oof. Oof so God. neither. Wait, wait, no use success. um, use um, the last What's fortune. The term called this? Yeah, fortune. Yeah, I'll use, use the last fortune. fortune. What does that do? Reroll or like? Uh, give it to you instantly. Um, since you, fortune kind of blows big, um, you look at it and you're like, eh, fishing boat, what the fuck ever. Um, uh, but then you look harder again and you notice, uh, it looks like they're packing the boat full of explosives and you can see the commander keeps shouting and he's shouting at the men filling the boat. But then you notice he keeps looking further down the dock where you can see something floating just above um, the water, which you're like, oh, U-boat, got it. 
So it looks mm. like the boat that they're filling up, they're going to use as a distraction and try to escape on a U-boat. All right. Uh, Anyone got an ability that can just stop this U-boat? Yeah. If anybody got an ability for that, that'd be good. Um, although they're prepping a distraction. So if you were careful with our shooting and don't hit any of the explosives, then, you know. Wait, what if we want to? We can take them. Like, what if but we... we want the commander alive, right? Well, He's not is... next to it. So not a bad idea to blow up their boat um, as he's got a couple of uh, soldiers that he's sort of commanding. He's got two standing next to him and he's ordering another three to like uh, load up this boat full of crap. Let's yeah, just pop the boat it... before he sends it out. Is, is the U-boat close enough to it? Like the, like how is it close to the docks? Like, yes, it you... is. It's further down the okay. docks um, and it's kind of, and you can tell it's, trying not to draw attention to itself um while there's there's there uh you is it's only because benji just happened to notice like it looked he, the he could see the silhouette of it in the in the water is there are there any other vehicles nearby uh there's some old boats there's your car uh there's some um half working cars around you um <laughs> The 1940s version of a forklift. Okay. I wonder if it would be another time uh, to make. Were you looking for something cocktails. specific? The f- nope. For- forklift makes me happy. Okay. Jingy, All right. What, uh, would it be a good time to make some Molotov cocktails? Uh, there are some bottles laying around. You might be able to do that. An excellent time. There's definitely right. going to be fuel around here. So, right. so yeah. So I you're, you're, I, 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 I like where your head's at. You're thinking. You're thinking relative. If we're using my favorite unit of measurement, you're thinking small Florida bang. I'm ready to pull out a large Florida bang. All right. Here we go. And I'm going to kind of walk us over to the forklift mm-hmm. and be like, <clears throat> now, uh, this, this, this sucker right here, uh, it's going to have about a uh, 500 pounds, uh, of, uh, of weight this thing can hold. And I'm just going to kind of size up like one of the, like the cars that's like been ripped in half, uh, from like a mortar shell or something and be like, now that's about 400. And then I'll just start pulling out all of my explosives, take, Benji's explosive and any other grenades we have, and be like, and that's about a hundred pounds. And I'm gonna like, like be like one plus one, and then be like, and then uh, so you're, you're with me, five hundred pounds. Uh, the Do you need me to frame, provide covering fire? Well, since here's the thing, the car frame in front of the forklift works is gonna be like my shield. Uh, as I drive this puppy straight at that U-boat over there. And then uh, once it makes a splash, uh, then we make a big splash, if you catch my meaning. I I like what you're thinking. Let's do it. All right. Okay. So what's the specifics of your plan? How do you you want to? So, yeah, so, so my plan is is to, like, put the half of the car in neutral, wheel it so it's kind of like in a good position for the forklift to get underneath it, mm-hmm. load that car full of all the explosives, and then raise the forklift up enough so it covers the driver, mm-hmm. uh, like the the half a car is covering oh, like the driver. Shield. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And then just r- drive the forklift down the docks and then do the old rock on accelerator bail trick. And then once it splashes into the water next to the U-boat, kaboom. Okay. And then just sink the U-boat. I'm that cat Spider-Man. Yes. <laughs> cat. So with that in mind, you're gonna need we're gonna need two two covers of fire. We're gonna need someone covering you, and then we're gonna also need someone to take out the people on the boat. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I don't want to risk everyone on this. I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, and uh, I mean, they're just there to be fair. Their uh, their attention is on getting the explosives and following the commander's orders and la di da di da. Hopefully they ain't going to be paying too much attention to a forklift bearing on down the docks. If they are, yes, please, you know, maybe take some pot shots. But, uh, you know, no, no need to like storm the docks and make this a whole long like, you know, 
Alamo kind of situation. Is this a is this a proper time to remind you that you are a very rotund fellow, and I I am more worried about you coming back than I am you getting out there. Well, I, I appreciate that. Uh, you would be surprised at how much practice I have of uh, bailing out of cars. You rolled um, your ankle on a train. Okay, that train is bigger and faster than a car, and it exploded bigger than that. Like the explosion on the train was like Florida extra large bang. There was nothing really I could do about it. I mean, and it wasn't an ankle; it was my knee. I got a little bit of a trick knee, but it's okay. It's not, it's not a problem. Okay, so you do know that uh, the way that you're going to have to go with this thing, you kind of do have to pass behind where the the officer is standing so some covering fire sort of situation is not a bad idea um nothing more than to distract them all right betty redeemed harry jesus violence by the way okay all Benji. right that that's a perfect timing um i like the plan so um Tessa and I, how about that? I've got this sick MG42 that I haven't had a chance to use. Okay. So I will post up uh, behind cover over there and just start laying into them. Uh, you know, 1,200 rounds per minute. This gun ain't no slouch. Got so it. So I'm going to just provide a huge amount of cover and fire, try to kill as many as I can. Uh, Tessa, if you would like my Tommy gun, you can have it because we're going to need some help laying down fire. Sure. Okay, Tessa's uh, got the Tommy gun. Abby, what 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 are you gonna do? Um, Abby's kind of sitting, and she's reading a very bloody the Velveteen Rabbit, and she's just kind of looking up, observing what everyone <laughs> else is doing, and she's just looking to make sure, like she's keeping eyes on Bo to make sure he gets out of that alive. Okay, um, did you want to go with him? Did you want to um, right covering what? What uh, what did you want your action in in this situation to be? I'm gonna provide cover. I don't want to get too close to that big bang. Okay, got it. Howie, what you doing? Um, providing cover as such as it is with a small pistol. Okay, cool. Uh, We're probably not actually firing yet. Got it. Yeah, just like how, what 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 are you gonna do in the plan situation? So, uh, Jing Yi, what are you gonna do? Uh, Shinny is only really good at up close combat, so she's gonna. Oh boy, because if I try to go where Bo's, I'm gonna make some Molotov cocktails, get them ready for hucking. Okay, uh, so we'll say that uh, you can sneak up and maybe try to huck some Molotovs into their uh, patrol boat that they're loading up. So, yeah. um, we'll go down the line. Um, we'll start with you since uh. Uh, you're first in my list here. Um, give me a stealth and agility to get past and around so that you get in a good throwing distance. All right, that's two successes. All right, excellent. Um, twelve. The uh, bow. Ease. Say, say what? Ease. What'd you say? Give me a coordination and vehicles. Roger. It's going to be <clears throat> difficult. I like to use my focus on uh, vehicles, cars. Okay. I'll allow it. Uh, and uh, my truth of born behind the wheel. I'll allow it. Okay. And uh, I'll use my fortune I have. Okay. Or not fortune. Uh, uh, momentum, you have one left. Yes, momentum, yes. Okay. That is three successes. Excellent. Uh, Howie, give me a fighting and coordination. All righty. You're not Howie. You're Benji. <laughs> Yes. I Wait, admire I'm not. Oh, I thought you said Harry, and I was like, okay. <laughs> Sorry, that's my bad. No, that's fine. <clears throat> Two successes. Excellent. Uh, Kitty, 
Give me uh, a fighting and coordination as well. Two successes. Two successes. Excellent. And then Benji, uh, fighting and coordination as well. Uh, one success. <laughs> Good. Not rolling great. Um, Tessa, what were you going to do in this? Co uh, recovering fire? Yep, recovering uh, fire. Recovering fire, yeah. recovering uh, fire uh, yes. Recovering fire. Uh, uh, fighting and coordination. Oh, my coordination is wonderful. Um, one success. Excellent. Um, so, Bo, you get this thing rigged up. Uh, you send it sailing. Uh, you're driving it past. Do you give a yippee ki -yay? Do you say anything? Do you draw your attention to yourself? Or do you just kind of, like, zoom past? Uh, I will, uh, as I'm driving past, uh, I'll just uh, yell out, uh, maybe it's the forklift that has like the very small loudspeaker on it. I can get on the on the microphone. Who knows? I'll just be like, and in tonight's news, Florida man blows up a submarine. And I will hop off after that. <laughs> nice. Uh, the rest of you uh, just open fire in the area. The Germans scatter. Um, and then Jung Yi, you start chucking bottles that set aflame the patrol boats. Um, they're in a very bad situation at the moment. Uh, they all take cover. And then um, you see uh, the the off in the distance, the um, forklift go over the edge. And then a split second later, just kaboom. Um, and just water flies up everywhere. You see shrapnel shoot up out of the um, the uh, the bay. Um the of us are wearing helmets <laughs> the um the patrol boat uh quickly get, starts getting set aflame and then that explodes um and so uh just anybody that was near there being the germans themselves are either shrapneled dead knocked out or just in a state of what the fuck um <laughs> Which allows you to immediately uh, approach uh, SS Commander Hans Hansel, and what do you do with him? And we pin him to the ground. Yeah, his he's like got his face is kind of fucked up. He's got like the bleeding out of the ears, <laughs> uh, explosion effect. Um, yeah, he's easily. Um, I I feel like we should interrogate him somewhere else, maybe. Yeah, I feel like we should wait. Mm, I hope he knows sign language because I don't think he'll ever be able to hear anything again after what just happened. You can tell he can hear. Uh, just his, he's got perfect the the the. Ear. Okay, perfect. All right, English. Do you speak it? Go fuck it ourselves. Okay, motherfucker. I'm just gonna fucking wing him in like the. I'm gonna just kneecap him. <laughs> Just bam! Let's see how you like that, bitch. Screams, tries Ow. to grab his knee. You probably he probably can't because he's restrained. Um, just starts cursing at you in German. Where is the Red Widow? <laughs> Long gone. Fuck you. The war is over, buddy. <clears throat> now I can tell my officers. Uh, I can tell my superiors that you cooperated with us and helped us out. Or I can tell them that. Well, I can let them know what you've been doing inside this city. Ah, for the fatherland, you can fuck yourselves, Americans. Germany will live forever. Cut will it now? Ears off. What? I cut one of his ears off. Holy shit! Okay. Um. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Now we're just committing war crimes. Yeah. Now, and he's getting off on it. Okay. So here's <laughs> the thing, buddy. Uh, you can definitely tell the cutting of the ears is unexpected and has a slight effect on him. 
um, to the point where Benji, you get the sense that he's ready to break, but he's fucking Nazi fanatic, so not quite. All right, uh, I want to try something. Okay, I try some. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, while he's on the ground, I'm gonna rip his uh, uniform shirt open and take my knife and start carving random things and start muttering. Oh my god! And oh. I don't have a spell to do. I just want to scare him as if. He probably knows about shit now, occult shit, and is um, my hope is fear. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually kind of awesome. So smart. Uh, That's yeah, so he cool. Immediately, just like freaks the fuck out, and he screams, "Boat by J- Algiers! Left to buy a boat by Algiers!" Left to buy a boat by Algiers before the blockade. Got a name for that boat? Uh, he lists off a random name, but like names don't mean much. Um, he gives you like uh, he does give you a name, uh, so you could find it um, that way. Uh, he says they were heading north. Uh, heading north. What kind of boat is it? Uh, it gives it's uh, like a wartime boat, like a patrol boat. Right. How long ago did they leave? Uh, just before the blockade. So, you know, it's Shit. been a day or so. Okay, we're not too far off. But this is inconvenient. Uh, are there any boats in the harbor that aren't? You know that if you just sort of let... I mean, the wars or the battles sort of closing and you know that uh, the allies do have a beachhead. So it would be. Yeah, I mean, this battle was never going to be a victory for the yeah, Germans. Yeah, like, not unlikely that you could easily find some boat and commandeer it. Uh, with yeah, we can just. Yeah, we can. I mean, we're SOE, so we can probably, you know, get our own little PT boat. Or fuck, we could even get a plane. I mean, someone else would have to fly us, but <laughs> I'm sure they'd be happy to. Uh... Figure it out. <clears throat> cool. So. Um, anything else you want to do with this guy? Um, any- oh, yeah, of course, of course. Oh, 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 no, I was, I thought we could take him in to you stand are. trial later. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, He's an SS officer. He, yeah, it's not going to be good for him. Yeah. Um, in fact, he'd probably prefer we shot him. Like, yeah, he's not in no, a good, I, uh, he's, he's actually now he's just kind of begging for death. Yeah. I'm just nope. going to slit his throat. Yeah. Okay. Oh. oh, I'm already straddling him and like cutting runes, uh, cutting runes into his. I'm gonna just hot <laughs> slit his throat. Cool. Goddamn. All right. Well, um, anything else you want to do before you start heading towards the beachhead? No, I don't think so. I think we covered all. The no, we need to move quickly. Okay. Because they they got a day's head start. They're probably already in Sicily. All right. Excellent. Um, well, you make your way to the beachhead, kind of fill in your report as much as you feel is necessary to the, um, uh, operating sort of beachhead commander. And at that point you are able to procure a boat and within a few hours of rest, you actually start heading off into the Mediterranean and that's where we'll leave it till next awesome time. All right. Cool. So we committed war crimes. It was awesome. Um, Against Nazis. Yeah. I mean, you know, war crimes against Nazis is like. At the end of the day, the war crimes are war crimes. But they're war crimes against Nazis. So who cares? It's like jaywalking and shoplifting. Technically crimes, but like you're not hurting anyone. War crimes did did exist at that time period. Oh, they did. Yes. I thought that mostly came after. I mean, they weren't as well. They weren't as clearly codified, but they definitely exist. There was like a precedent for punishing. Yeah. After um, World War One, as horrible horrible it was, then that's when they did the Hague Convention, I think. Right. Angels? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there were such things as war crimes. Um, I mean, so. I don't think it's a tabletop game if the party doesn't commit at least one war crime. It's not a fun yeah, it game. It tends to right? happen in tabletop games. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so, exactly. 
As always, you can find us on the social meds at Vorpal Tales. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Tales. We have Vorpal Tales, and we play awesome adventures and terrifying tales almost twice a week. Um, almost every day now. So, yeah, watch us. It's awesome. See our calendar that pops up in the show reels and on our website at VorpalTales.com and our, and our tw- Twitch channel. Also, check out the pull list on our website for another show at Funky Thunder. It does his weekly review in no particular order of this week's latest comic releases. Also, please sure please be sure to check out our shop links on the website. Um, make your games more vorpally with the supplements that we produced. Um, and also, we have merch. Um, I think we actually have like little neckerchiefs that you can put on nunchucks. It's kind of awesome. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, aprons, throw throw pillows, throw pillows. Yeah, exactly. Um, I have been at Space Lord PJs. You can check my doodle website at cartoon.ninja. Everyone, plug your pluggables. Let uh, the viewers know what show they can catch you in next and any, any other cool online things that you're doing. Hello, I'm Jane. I was Shinyi tonight. Uh, you can find me on the internet at the Confused Crow on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. I have commissions open, so if you want some art, that'd be real nice. Hey people, uh, this is Harry. Uh, I go by the Slubri Cat everywhere on Twitter. I'm at Slubri Cat, all that shit I'm on YouTube too. Uh, Saratoga by Night season four, the final season is finally out. Um, we are three episodes in now. Um, it's a time. You should tune in. I think you'll like it. It's good. That's all I'll say. Listen to it. You don't need to be caught up to the other ep- to the other seasons. Know what's happening. It's fun. Howdy doody, everybody. I am Patrick, aka Patty Shakes underscore everywhere on the social medias. And tonight I played Beauregard. You were Grease Monkey from Florida. Uh, next time you'll find me is Friday, running season two, Draco Genesis, A Flight of Whimsy. Uh, our heroes have made it to the port town or are about to board the ships to go search for the Shimmering Isle. Uh, other than that, I'm on Wednesdays and uh, keep an eye out. We just did a game for our sponsor, Gem Hammer and Sons, uh, wonderful Dex of Illusion supplements, Dex of Wonder, things like that. Uh, they are doing a so called tournament of champions with us and a couple other uh, Forpal, or not Forpal, <laughs> us and a couple other uh, tabletop groups that they sponsor. Uh, pitting us against each other to see whose groups will reign supreme. Uh, it is a pre-recorded episode. I can't tell you what happened, uh, but it was awesome. Our our players had a good time, and look at, be on the lookout. We will uh, post the links uh, when that uh, episode airs. So be on the lookout for that. Hey folks, I'm JT. I was Howie tonight. You can find me online at Sensomancer, and I believe this is the only game. I might be on Sunday soon. Trying to figure that out right now. So yep, catch me next week. Hey folks, it's Selkie. Uh, again, you can find me everywhere as the Rebel Selkie, um, except for that one place. And we already went over the aforementioned reasons. Uh, so you can find me online on here, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings. Uh, Tuesdays right now is Black Void. Wednesdays is Aktung, obviously. Um, and Thursdays we are doing Pathfinder, second edition. Um, and if you're interested in what I'm doing, Outside of our little Vorpal fan here, uh, I am also lead educator and small press curator for Gathering Games up here in Buffalo, New York. And you can follow us on Instagram at Gathering Game Buffalo. We're really cool. Hi, everybody. I'm Kitty Kimchi, and you can follow me on social medias at Yep, she's Blasian. And I was Abby, your infiltrator today. And you can also catch me on Vancouver by night for Toronto by ta- Toronto by day, Tales of the Rookery, where I'm playing your mischievous puka. Awesome. Uh, and finally, it's that time again. Uh, vote for who your favorite player was tonight. And also till the end of the show reel, viewers can vote for their favorite cast. Um, so we're voting for the most heroic thing that happened tonight. So... Um, JT, please tell us what was the most heroic thing you saw tonight? Most heroic thing? In quotes, I guess we should leave that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Bo again. Always. Oh, Bo. Like... Bo did do something pretty darn heroic. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, really, the question should be who did the most heroic thing and why is it Bo? Like. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Jane, who uh, who was the most heroic tonight? Oh, yeah, I'm also gonna have to give it to Bo for the uh, the forklift idea. Okay. Uh, Silky, most heroic thing. So, part of me wants to follow the leader because I agree. Uh, the most heroic thing, especially considering Bo is Bo, would be the forklift. But I'm going to divert from the norm. Um, and I'm actually going to say Abby with the Velveteen Rabbit. Oh. Takes a lot of guts. <laughs> but that's with a book in front of a librarian. Nice. Nice. Uh, Patty, most heroic thing. Uh, I'm going to say... Uh, Benji keeping his uh, two little uh, uh, murderers on a leash uh, with the <laughs> other team. I tried my best. Nice. I am offended. I am not <laughs> murdered. It's still they still did do a minor war crime. I not mean, it was only minor. Crime. Imagine yeah. how major it might have been. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Um, um, they killed an unarmed and surrendered prisoner. That's real bad. You no, know, it's still a Nazi. Um, kidding. yeah, but <laughs> most heroic thing. So I would give it to Bo for his forklift idea. I would. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give it to Howie because oh. he's the only reason why that asshole <laughs> will be a... Well, no, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he was the only reason why that guy would never be able to teabag anybody ever again because I was about to do some things. <laughs> and we stopped that. Nice. All right, Thank cool. You. Um, let's see. We actually did get an audience vote for GT. So we got one for the Rebel Silky. Um, so we have a two-way tie between Bo and Howie. And Bo, I think you've gotten this before, and I don't think Howie has. So I feel like we'll lean towards Howie tonight. So Howie, Pass so long. you get five XP extra. Um, we'll say uh, you get 10. Everyone else gets eight. Um, and yeah, awesome being excellent to each other players. Uh, well, Snooker Snacks, you don't have to go home, but you can't keep playing this game tonight. Watch our Vorpal Tales crew next Wednesday night at 8 p.m. for more World War II Mythos Weirdness. And check out all our other shows, same Vorpal Time, same Vorpal Tales stream channel. Remember to buy war bonds like you're smashing that like and subscribe and for the love of the dice game on.